We got to get right back into this. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. In studio, Steve Coogan. You might remember him from uh, Tropic Thunder, a movie that's uh, doing very, very well at the box office right now. Loved uh, Tropic Thunder. Thank you very much. We saw an early screening of that, and it was so good. It's the first movie I've seen in, can't even tell you how long, where I actually went back uh, a second time and saw it again. Yeah, yeah, no, it stands it. I think it's going to do well on DVD, though. Yeah, well. you play the director in Tropic Thunder. Mm. Yes, I do. And, uh, well, I, enough people have seen it. I mean, you get blown yeah. up in the movie, and yeah. uh, and they're they're holding up your head. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, that, I, I stand on the line. I make a big speech. Part of the joke is like that the, you figure I'm going to be one of the central characters, and then I stand <laughs> on a landmine and, and literally blow up. Yeah. You know? um, and then they just kind of start showing off your head. I think Ben Stiller's like, look, this is a prop head, and he starts, <laughs> he puts his like his fingers inside the skull, and now he's like licking blood, and like, look, this is just prop blood, and and then Ben Stiller makes the faces like, oh, whoa, whoa, this is real. <laughs> yeah. But that's got to be creepy to see your head like that. Yeah, they they do, they do a big cast of your head to try and they, that's to make a replica head. They mm-hmm. kind of they swayed you in these sort of plaster Paris bandages, and yeah, you have to breathe through straws stuck up your nose for uh, 45 minutes. That's, That's got to be... be great, though, as a comic, <laughs> though, just to, to know you're going to get killed in a movie, like finally something different than just doing, like, you know... Oh, it's great. Really funny role. And also, if you're going to leave a movie, then then you should go out literally with a bang, which is what I do, because <laughs> um, you're really not expecting it. Yeah. You're i uh, I'm a fan. I mean, uh, my ex-girlfriend turned me on to, before she left me, turned me on to uh, <laughs> I'm Alan Partridge. Wow, she has double good taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very hurtful. She's uh, it's, it's really, really a funny series, up. man. Um, really funny series, but it doesn't. They have to put on DVD the format where it works here because it doesn't seem to work here. You have to buy a special like the, uh, the DVD player has to play like uh, whatever format you guys use in England. I know they did. They did release. They released the uh, they released the second series on uh, on American format recently. Uh, but uh, one of the series they have, but it's the BBC. Are kind of you know, they're not the. Uh, most high proficient of organizations. It's so great, though. I mean, uh, you play in it. It's like a, 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 such an ass Alan Partridge is. It's mm-hmm. such a great... I, I'd say that and, and, and Gervais in the office are probably the do best portrayals of horses' asses I've ever seen. <laughs> That's <laughs> really great. Yeah. No, I think you're... I agree with you. Ricky Gervais runs me a pretty close second, yeah. Nice. I like that. I like <laughs> wow, you're pretty too. serious. I was told you no. were kind of wacky. Oh, no, no. no. We're, not, God. we're not wacky. That's for sure. Wacky. Waka waka. Uh. You got uh, it. That was a good line by uh, by Mr. Coogan. We didn't know if he was like serious that. or not, though. No. Well, you can't ever tell. You know, I'm kind of quite dry, especially at uh, whatever time it is. You know? Yeah. So, uh, Goddamn early. You got a great review in uh, in Hamlet too. Uh, did you read this review? In the uh, the guy said this is this is like it's it's like always a catch twenty two, and they give you a good review because the language just kind of makes you want to smash their faces. But it said <laughs> mostly though, there's the endlessly resourceful, endlessly inventive, bedazzling Mr. Coogan. Ooh, okay, bedazzling. Uh, yeah, and I didn't even. Uh... I don't even know the guy. I've never met him, you know. So, All right. well, they that's really pretty nice. Him. Yeah, you were. It was a hit at uh, Sundance, and they said it's uh, never since since Death of a Salesman, uh, never a failure been so entertaining. But it was a great review of the film. Yeah, no, I've, I've, they've been pretty kind to me. I think uh, it's kind of. Uh, it was, I just it was a good. It was, but it's a great script, you know. Pam Brady wrote it. The Team America and South Park and. Uh, uh, and so you know, it's got that kind of level of humor, and it. it's pretty mm-hmm. close to the bone, pretty risque. Um, what's, and, and we got to ask the basic question. So, so what, what's it about? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Play, Hamlet too. I play uh, a drama school teacher, a uh, failed actor who's uh, from who's been in LA trying to get work and goes to Tucson to become a drama teacher and uh, in the back end of Beyond. And uh, the, they're going to close down the drama department. And he decides to save it by writing a sequel to Hamlet, <laughs> um, uh, in which uh, Hamlet builds a time machine, goes back in time, and saves everyone's life, <laughs> and uh, meets Jesus Christ along the way. Um, and uh, in the beginning of the movie, you sort of get a tone of what he's about because he's putting on a stage production uh, with the students, a stage production of Erin Brockovich uh, <laughs> at the school. So he's kind of... Um, He's, that's where he's coming from. He's sort of super earnest guy. He thinks he's an inspirational teacher. You know, like uh, he keeps quoting Dead Poets Society and Dangerous Minds, as, uh, <laughs> oh, dangerous uh, say, minds. Say, saying that that's, that's what he is, you know. And uh, those films are kind of like models for him. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, and he's, he's a horse's ass. It satirizes inspirational teachers' movies, but uh, kind of becomes one in the end as well. A Dangerous Mind with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, which she did the worst southern accent. She was like kind of in and out of her accent, and it, it, it was that Coolio song was the, uh, the theme song. Yeah, yeah. That really sucks. What a great <laughs> movie to parody. <laughs> 
the, the bio they gave us on you, um, it's really weird the information we get. They said you, he claims to have a, a bad temper and be an angry person in real life, but you think it makes you funnier. I mean, how, how true is that? Like, do you try to keep the anger? Uh, yeah, it, it, well, he's just, there's something about this kind of navel gazing, you know, you get a lot of like, uh, those, those, well, that's where West Coast people who talk about their emotions constantly, and he's one of those guys. No, you know, I mean you. Those, oh, me? Yeah. You're all. I mean, you, uh, personal it's, it's question. Actually, yeah, yeah, oh, do I channel, yeah, of course, I mean, I mean, all the parts of me that are an ass, I channel into what I do, you, know, you might as well, they're kind of useless qualities, unless you kind of uh, employ them in some way, and so that's what I try to do, just, just put them into the work. But are you really an angry person in real life? Um, am I, no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not that. I don't have the energy, I guess, to be to be angry. I just get. I'm just. I'm just. I, I I prefer to be someone who's rather than angry with life. I'm just like kind of constantly slightly irritated by it. <laughs> mm. Were you tired of doing Alan Partridge? Are you sick and tired of that character? I mean, after it was 14 years or whatever it was. Uh, well, c kind of, but I kind of. I've not done him for like six years. Uh, so so, uh, but then I'm, I'm going on the road in the fall in the UK, doing sort of doing live comedy all around uh, all around the country and uh, I'll be doing the character in that so I do like a bunch of characters on stage live and I'll be doing that like round kind of you know arenas and live venues and well stuff. you're massive in England it's a huge huge show in in, in England and uh, have you found that it's kind of harder to be uh, to, to, is, is the success here been as easy to come by or because it seems like the shows take off there and then a couple of years later they get replayed here and they do really well yeah, uh, it's well, it's, it's kind of uh, uh, it's actually been quite good here because I've, I've kind of in England when you become successful you get associated with the thing that made you that made you a success and uh, that can be kind of like a double edged sword because it stops you being able to break out of it and do other stuff and have preconceived notions of you. Um, but then, uh, but but over here, a uh, lot of directors and uh, actors are kind of. Um, wanting to work me in a different way, and I, I write a lot of my stuff. And I'm collaborating with people. I'm doing some. I'm doing a series for HBO with Justin Theroux, who wrote Tropic Thunder. So uh, I got a lot of stuff uh, that's that's kind of uh, is different from what I've, I'm established uh, uh, doing in the UK. So it's kind of uh, so it's actually my anonymity here that uh, I had sort of uh, uh, for, for quite a while uh, has kind of enabled me to do different stuff. Can you do an American accent? I do one in, in Hamlet too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is it tough? Uh, yeah, but I got a coach. Yeah. I'm oh, you coach. do. Yeah, I, I always see that. Gonna, in the I'm not going to audition for you right here. No, no. Let's <laughs> go see the movie. That's why I'm here. I wasn't even going to ask. You know, I was just wondering uh, how, how difficult that is. And I always see on the credits, you know, vocal coach and uh, accent coach, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think Anthony really wanted to hear the American accent. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. I'm fine. I'll wait till the movie. I'll yeah. watch. I'll see the movie because it always amazes me. A lot of times you see guys in movies and girls in movies, and then you watch the movie and don't think twice about it. And then you see them in an interview, and they're like, you know, oh, it was a wonderful experience. You're like, what the? <laughs> what, what happened? A couple of the guys from The Wire from the HBO show. Wow. Yeah, Dominic. Totally different in real life. Engli deep English accents. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gary Oldman, I never would have known he was he was British if I didn't hear him talking in an interview. He's always playing, you know. Yeah, he always plays American, that's right. Yeah, some, yeah, yeah, some yeah. Yeah. creepy, drugged yeah. out American cop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's a, a yeah. tenant with a bad coke habit. He's yeah. <laughs> Benson her somewhere and, and you hear him, he's a polite, he's a polite uh, English gentleman. English, yeah. a gentleman, yes. Sure. Yeah. Hey, uh, going back to Tropic Thunder, what do you think of the special interest groups having a problem with... Uh, uh, well, I think uh, I think all comedy is, uh, you know, you have to sail close to the wind, and, and it's uh, being, having edgy comedy is about being risque. And uh, the, the target is not, you know, the target of, the, of that comedy is quite clearly pretentious, um, sort of award-seeking, egotistical American actors. Right. Uh, who kind of in some ways exploit those people to get the awards uh, that 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 was the kind of target of the joke that's the satire um so but with I, that they they yanked down a lot of the uh, promotional material for the movie because it, it featured uh, the simple jack character that ben stiller played yeah yeah which was so disappointing it's like why do they cater to these people why do they fold uh, well, I think they could, it's not. It's not a case of that because they, they could, you have to counter the argument uh, rather than just run away. If you just run away and keep quiet, that's like a, almost a mission of guilt. And I think it's not. I think the, the movie is totally defendable. So, are they as bad over there it, it, about the humor? Because we become Americans have become really yeah. hypersensitive. Uh, I know in, in England, I think there's certain racial things that are probably like with Muslims, and I mean that's kind of like probably the way black white is here. But yeah. what, what are like the real sacred cows over there that they they really cry if you go after? Uh, I think they, they're they actually not that bothered about religion per se. Um, they tried to make it an offense to, or to them, they tried to make blasphemy an offense. 
at one point the government were going to introduce some law whereby you couldn't offend anyone's religion, which would have sort of ended the careers of probably 70% of uh, <laughs> comedians in Britain. You know, um, sacred cows, I guess the kind of uh, uh, Muslim thing people are super paranoid about, you know, because of uh, race relations in Britain. There's a little bit of that. But... Um, but 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 and I have to say, I mean, you say that Americans kind of maybe you think they're more conservative, but you look at something like South Park, uh, they I, they pretty much <laughs> go after. Yeah, but Jimmy brought everything. this to our attention a while ago. If you're a cartoon, you could get away with a hell of a lot more than let's say this yeah, radio. That's show. a very good point. Very Especially good point. a, a yeah, big yeah. money making cartoon. You know, they right. uh, they flew under the radar for a while and got very popular. And it's hard for a, a network, especially like Comedy Central, to take yeah. on such a, a successful yeah. show. Mm -hmm. So that's, no, they that's, get away with it. That's very true. Very true. And it can be explained, no matter how heinous their episodes are, and I love them, that they do try to do uh, it. It's, it's done not, in satire. It's, yeah, it's done in satire. Yeah. It's also not mean spirited. That's the other thing is where, where, where the comedy comes from. If the comedy seems to be peddling hate or it's mean. -minded, yeah, yeah, then there's then a problem. Then it's illegitimate, but it, it, they, they always come around and do something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, I think the, the, the South Park is a good example. I think you, you, you can do it in character. If you create a character that's very strong, <laughs> oh, yeah. you can kind of get away with murder. And I have done that in uh, Britain with Alan Partridge. He might say something which is offensive to women or offensive to some special interest group. And the joke is that he's uh, he doesn't really realize it's being offensive that the, the fact that it's offensive is the point of the joke right so you there there's a way of doing it but you need to establish yeah. uh, some people just don't get that like you're goofing on the character that's saying this because it's so preposterous that no one in their right mind it, 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 that lives in a society, a well, civilized society would say this. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely and, and that's where the joke is but you get people that just don't get it and they just see it on the outside and go, oh, wow, he's saying something racist or sexist. Well, it's sexist. almost like you say, there's certain things you're just not allowed to speak about, and that's just, mm -hmm. that's just dumb. In some I ways, that, it kind yeah. of, that, that makes people, inc inc encourages fear and people not to mm -hmm. sort of talk about kind of issues. Yeah. Sometimes if you, if you address kind of you know, like a latent racism, uh, that, that is the kind of sort of, the, that, the, not, not the out-and-out out racism, but the kind of subtle, kind of understated racism. <laughs> And you put that into comedy, it's a way of airing it, and people can go, oh, yeah, I've seen that. Or, yeah, maybe sometimes, uh, you know, that, that we're all guilty of that kind of, uh, it's, it's, you know, racism. So I think it's, it's uh, it, you know, you can use it in a, in a, a comedy can be used in a really positive way. The I subtler think, side of racism, like the little, the, the little stuff, like a lot of times, like, and I call myself doing this, like if, if black people are walking towards my car, I'll like slam all the locks down and scream and run a red light. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is subtle. Better safe than sorry. Yeah, that's, very, that's no, that's very subtle. Comedy, yeah. for some reason, you can't get away with things you can get away with in other uh, things like drama. Uh, you can get away with um, portraying blatant hate and racism as part of a character, as part of a storyline. But comedy, for some reason, is really. Um, they they look a little deeper into it, and they I, I don't understand why. I don't understand why that uh, that is either. I think it's because I think maybe what it is is people understand that laughter is incredibly powerful, and if you can get someone, if you want to make a point and you get people laughing, it's kind of like whatever the point you're making is, uh, you kind of won the argument. You know, it's it's mm. uh, it's a really powerful thing. If you make a you know, you get people laughing about. I mean, even in politics, like the election right now. If you if you make uh, some, if you make a kind of a joke about your opponent, opponent, and get people laughing at that joke, it's incredibly empowering. Mm -hmm. It's sort of it, it shows that you're the guy who makes the joke is the guy in control, and everyone else is laughing. At kind I of remember uh, God Hitler having him just screaming and howling at Nuremberg. <laughs> Oh, yeah. did he have them laughing? <laughs> yeah, they were uh, rolling in the aisles. Yeah. I bet you, know, if we think about Hitler, though, there's got to be times where Hitler tried jokes that didn't work. <laughs> but, oh, I'm like, bombing. He probably I tried think, to go off the cuff once I, in a while. Do you know what? I, I, I kind of doubt it. With uh, <laughs> I kind of doubt it. I don't know. It's a, that's a, it could be a German thing. I'll get mm. accused of xenophobia now by saying that Germans aren't absolutely hilarious. <laughs> um, and I think they are, but not maybe in the way they intended to be. <laughs> Boy, that grudge is still there, isn't it? <laughs> English-German uh, yeah. little grudge. Well, funnily enough, the English used to get on very well with the Germans before the Second World War. It was the French we traditionally didn't like. Right. Um, I think it was kind common of, hatred we've kind of, for I the think French. We've kind, of we've kind of found our way back into that niche yeah. you know, recently <laughs> with the French. <laughs> But no, with, it's, it's no, good the, to it's, hear. The, 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 yeah, the French has always been the people we traditionally mistrusted, and the French have mistrusted us and mm -hmm. think our food and behavior is odd, and we think their uh, sense of humor and, and uh, sexuality.
and yeah. <laughs> bathing <laughs> habits and military <laughs> history. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. You are uh, in, in uh, 2006. There was a big, you know, rumor that you and Courtney love. I mean, you know, I got to ask about it because it's it's kind of hot if you mm-hmm, were mm-hmm. hooking up with her. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, the only thing I have to say is uh, uh, whatever she said about me online. Um, uh, it, well, first of all, don't believe everything you read online, and also if. If if you're quoting her, I have to say that uh, no, no, I'm not. I actually don't, I don't know where. This, oh, really? Oh, all I, I, was, I don't know what she said. Oh, really? Um, I would just say uh, anyone who does read anything online that comes from her, I'd say that if if you're uh, interested in sort of uh, the veracity of a story, you're supposed to check the credibility of the source. Okay, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Check the credibility of the source of the story. Um, uh, beyond that, I've, uh, I've I've really nothing to say because um, if I do, uh, then I'll sort of I'll I'll open the floodgates to a soap opera that may be entertaining to other people but deeply dull to me. Well, mm. what, just, okay, because I didn't read. It. Was she bad mouthing you? Because now, but the way you're saying that, it sounds like she might have bad mouthed well, you. That I didn't uh, hear. Well, um, if I if I ent- uh, I, I, we're going to go around circles here because I'm just saying that I'm not going to say anything else about it, and you're asking me a question about it. So, by the way, this well, is the wacky part. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Yeah, I, can, this is where we get wacky. I, I can feel the joy and the cold sweat uh, simultaneously uh, happening beneath my clothes. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so, so that, where were we? So uh, that's it. That's it. You know. Um, all right. Um, that's a no comment. That's a no comment. That is a yeah. Well, I, I'm only asking because I really. This is all I have on. I'll Jimmy. No, no, I'm not even okay. asking. Cool. I, it just says. Uh, that, that they filed a two-week-long fling, apparently, and that was it, although this claim has been dismissed by both parties. That's all. I didn't read that she had written anything bad, so when you said that, of course. Right. If that was the nicest thing that had happened, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be full of the joys of spring. Uh, let's, but, uh, let me ask you a very hypothetical question. If you ever had sex with a girl who was known to be whacked out and did a lot of drugs and she bad-mouthed you, would you still want to have sex with her? Um, hypothetically, probably not. Hmm. Okay, this is going really well. <laughs> this is going so well. We are just kind of chatting. I didn't realize that was such a... <laughs> it's obviously... Um, All those subject. personal yeah. things are silly. Well, look, I, the British tabloids are notoriously worse than they are here. I mean, yeah, yeah. and they've been kind of, I guess... Aside from you. Well, that's not <laughs> Teasing, like Jimmy. Them. Jimmy, that's, I love that's, you. That's, that's a great thing, having your cake and eat it. It's like, it's like it must be terrible when you... Uh, when, oh, then it's just like, what? You know when? <laughs> oh, the, worst, the, the worst thing, a way of doing it is saying... You're an asshole. Does it hurt when people say that? <laughs> You're a jerk. Does it hurt when people say that? <laughs> well, there's no, but the thing is this. I'm a comic. Look, my life's an yeah. open book. I mean, I've died hookers the whole nine yards. So to me, none of it's a big, big deal. I mean, if, especially if it's been brought out in the press, um, none of it. It's all to me. It's just silly. But, uh, you know, so I ask about it. But now it's uncomfortable for everybody involved. <laughs> no. so let's talk about Elizabeth Shue, who uh, she's in the movie. And uh, how good was her ass in uh, Leaving Las Vegas? Mm. How sexy was that scene? Yeah, she looked very good in that. Great, yeah. <laughs> you don't remember her, no? Oh, yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was fantastic, yeah. And yeah, she dropped some weight. She had a little baby fat on her before that. I think she looked good uh, in yeah. Leaving Las Vegas. Yeah, she yeah. did. She looked pretty good in uh, Hamlet, too, as well. Mm-hmm. All right, now we're all uncomfortable, and it's kind of awkward. <laughs> no, Why not at awkward? all, Jimmy. I wasn't trying to be awkward. I was just asking. She was great. I made out with her. Uh, it was fun. <laughs> um, uh, on screen, not off screen. Um, there was no drugs involved, uh, and uh, we had a good time, and she was funny, and she made fun of herself. She plays herself in the movie, and um, that was all. That was all jolly, jolly good. Yeah. Mm. What about uh, what? Is, what is this? What is the worst rumor that the British tabloids have gotten a hold of and ran with that just absolutely wasn't true? That that what was the thing that made you the angriest? Um, that I uh, picked my nose. Yeah, that was the thing that made me the angriest. Yeah, they have a picture. Yes, they did. Well, you were just scratching. I was just scratching it. And and I was picking it, and that's booger you know, eating nose picker. Yeah. and but that, everyone, yeah. everyone picks their nose though. So yeah, it's exactly. a big deal. But it was yeah. kind of they caught me doing it in a car in L.A. Actually, oh, but, uh, digging yeah. deep. Yeah, they just sort of wired the picture back, so that Shame. that made me angry. Mm. Okay. Well, as long as I don't accuse you of eating it, picking is one thing. <laughs> eating is a totally different story. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I like the uh, British uh, tabloids because of the. Um, the nude uh, pictures. That's kind of like it's kind of a cool thing that they got there. And you don't mind like breasts on TV every so often. That's you true. Know. Yeah, we're pretty. And uh, we're all stuck. We're, we're just such a ugh well, when we, it comes to that. God forbid they could show they could show dead bodies on the news uh, when the children are, are home from school. 
uh, but a breast for some reason is just gonna, that's, gonna that's, wipe out the face wipe out of the civilization. Earth. Yeah, no, I know the body count can be as high as you like uh, on yeah. TV, but you can't show a breast. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love violence. Oh, do I love violence? Yes, but television. it's nice to balance it with a bit of sex. Exactly. Yeah. You got to be able to balance it with sex. I mean, what are people primarily they looking go, at on they the go internet? Well, they go well, so well together, like you know, egg and bacon. Yeah, yeah. Sex, violence. Mm. Mm. Just ask our own. Uh, what we got to go? Yeah, it's time oh, to go. I was just saying, Pat Duffy he loves that sex and violence stuff. I'm sorry, I got Chick awkward and uncomfortable. Just... I like this. I'm gonna just let it just awkward and uncomfortable. Up. A little bit, yeah. I can I've tell been having like... a grand time. <laughs> no, but I can tell he's a little. He thinks that we were kind of. Uh, out to ask him, uh, but it's, it's just not the truth. I asked me the British tabloids because I they just they're notoriously awful, you know. And yeah, I'm not a huge fan of them, but uh, you know they sell tickets for me, so I, I, I'm I, I'm not too happy. Not too unhappy. Obviously, it's a sensitive subject that uh, we didn't know. I, we could say that much. We didn't know we were. You know. All well, right, it, drop it. Is it a catch twenty two though? Is it like a love hate relationship with them? Because as as revolting as they are, they do again. They keep you in the spotlight. Think the paparazzi here. Well, not so great because I don't think you know. I think it depends what you're saying. Like the paparazzi, like uh, put, might put people in the spotlight, but it doesn't help you actually get more people into to into the theaters. That that's more about reviews and stuff like that. People don't look at people in People magazine and go, wow, they're, 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 they're walking out with that, they're stepping out of that girl, I'm going to go see their movie. It doesn't work like that. So, by and large, no. I mean, uh, no, it's not, I, I kind of, I think that that's kind of tabloids are the, uh, kind of evil incarnate, yeah. Yeah, yeah, kind of evil incarnate. Yeah. All right, there you go. Steve Coogan, Hamlet 2 uh, opens wide this Friday, right? It, yes, it does. Yeah, and, it's, and it's theaters getting... now in select places. Here, maybe Los Angeles, a couple of the major cities, but Friday you can see it everywhere. It is getting really good as it is. There you go. Thank right. you. Thank you. We're Thank heading you, over to XM Satellite Radio. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> All right, now the fun begins. It's Opie and Anthony on Sirius XM Radio. Say our Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Uh, Stephen S. from Bayshore. Wow, I love the first appearance of Tabloid Jimmy. He sure made one hell of an impression of on Coogan. What did Coogan say as soon as the mics went off? I, I enjoyed the banter. Yeah, yeah. enjoyed the banter. Well, I, we got to explain what happened. I guess um, I heard that uh, Mr. Coogan might have had a uh, might have had a bit of a panic attack live on our show today. Well, and uh, talking to Jimmy will do that. And Jimmy, uh, tabloid Jimmy, tabloid Jimmy. I really I'm on the really, case. I'm really in a fucking horrible mood right now, I, and I'll tell you why. During the interview, because I'm a fan, I like Steve Coogan. Um, mm -hmm. Before he came in, we, uh, he was friends with Owen Wilson, really close friends, and there were rumors circulating that he had been involved with uh, uh, getting uh, Owen drugs. It, there was just all these rumors that had circulated. Rumor and speculation. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. That and, and Owen we, Wilson's problems might have started with Steve Cook. Right, or have been helped by him. Or Exactly. Mm -hmm. And yes. I can understand why he wouldn't want to go into that, A, because sure. it's his friend, and B, for legal reasons. This Could is be not, some legal ramifications. To me, that's not even a, a, a cunty avoid the subject thing. That's one of the ones you have to, you know, you got to kind of avoid. Like, right. Fair enough. So I had no problem with that. And he rarely does interview Steve Coogan, yeah. by the way, because of that. He doesn't want to deal with it. Well, crap. now he won't do any, but, I bet. Yeah, no, so. but this is why I'm really, really irritated, because um, I would have avoided that. Because, and again, I like the guy. It's not about mm -hmm. getting him in here and douching him. So on the prep, we all get prep sheets. And I read the emails last night, and it was mentioned, the whole tie-in with Owen Wilson. And uh, on the prep sheet, it says, uh, we have a bunch of information. We get one of these beforehand. Oh, a little bit about Hamlet, too. A little bit about his life, uh, claiming to have a bad temper, an angry person. Um, and, and here's what I have about Courtney Love. In August 2005, the News of the World stated that rock star Courtney Love had claimed to be pregnant with Coogan's child. Following a two-week-long fling the pair allegedly had while staying at the same hotel. Although this claim has been dismissed by both parties. Hmm. That's what I have on Courtney Love. Seems kind of innocent. Ah, you know, did he, you know, she's a rock star, yeah, did yeah. he bang her, did he not so, bang her? So you that's know? why you went and, and asked him about Courtney Love, basically, but now... Nothing about the drug thing. No, this I didn't is all was a... just, you wanted to know if he fucked Courtney Love and I didn't know. how it was. And, and again, I'm, I'm annoyed at the prep sheet, but I'm also annoyed at myself that I didn't I didn't know this. Um, Because it just, it just stopped him in his tracks. Oh, yeah. But I'm, that's why I said I'm a comic. My life is open. I've gotten hooked. I couldn't yeah. understand why it would be a big deal. Well, did you hook up with Courtney or didn't you? 
Um, I thought that's what they had denied. Maybe they were friends. Mm -hmm. It had been speculated that they had sex, and they did whatever it was. So now I get this sheet. I asked for more information, obviously, because uh, I asked Roland afterwards. I'm like, why did he get mad about that? He goes, well, that was a tie-in to oh, and Wilson. Lawsuit. But and who like, knew? I should have. And I'm fucking, I'm just annoyed I didn't do my homework. Um, and if we're going to get a prep sheet and she's going to be mentioned, I just kind of wish that that had been on the sheet, even in parentheses, you might, whatever. Um, this is what I have where this is offline. I don't know where Sam got this. Wilson's drug use was so frequent. It was even the cause of his Memorial Day breakup with Kate Hudson. And his friends are placing the blame squarely on Wilson's newfound best buddy, British actor Steve Coogan. Mm. Um, and this is what... Uh, I went through it with Steve, Coogan's former girlfriend, rocker Courtney Love, told us. Oops. I was just at a rehab, and he was right there with the drugs. I tried to warn Owen. I tried to warn his friends. I hope from the bottom of my heart that Owen stays the hell away from that guy. <laughs> wow, okay, so. That's why when I said, well, what did she say? He, he just was like, panicked. I'm not answering another question. That's what that was about. So he wasn't being a douchebag, but I was getting angry at myself. I'm like, why is he being a dick when I'm really not? But there, I, I'm there are two Courtney Love stories here. One is the uh, story of him uh, having sex with her for two weeks, the pregnancy, that. And then the other one is this uh, Owen Wilson drug thing. He must have thought you meant that. Of course he did. Of course he and did. And that's why I was kind of, uh, I was just whatever. So I'm not, look, I'm just annoyed I'm annoyed at the way it was put on the prep sheet, and I'm also annoyed at myself. And, and by the way, conti Fuck him. continuing uh, with the Owen Wilson thing, uh, Kate Hudson banned Coogan from Wilson's house while they were dating. She knew he was bad, said a source. Wow. And look. Seems so gentlemanly. The bottom line is this. Any type of accusations, like, like <laughs> hey, you're fucking, you're coming to America, you want to make films and all that stuff, and... And one of, he's one of the biggest stars in the country, Owen Wilson. Yeah. And, you know, and then you're accused of fucking giving him drugs that make him almost kill him. You know, I, I, that could be a, a bad thing. It could have be. have on your head. So you probably want to avoid that. And that's fine. But I'm just, I'm really annoyed that, that the pregnancy thing. Cancel all my fucking interviews. Yeah, he, you're not going to hear from him uh, anytime yeah. soon. He, uh, his face, like, just, he was in a panic mode, it looked like. A little yeah. bit of a panic attack. Yeah. Stephen S. from Bayshore, I love the, the faithful listeners that understand this show in and out. Line of the day was Ope hitting the exit theme seven minutes early. Yeah, I noticed Fan that, too. Fan-fucking-tastic, sir. I'm, I'm glad you did that. <laughs> and everyone's looking like, wow, the show's over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we had so yeah, much time over. left. show's <laughs> over. I could feel myself getting so aggravated. I still let it go, to be honest with you. But I was also getting aggravated at myself uh -huh. because, uh, like, I wasn't. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually glad in hindsight I didn't because now I know what it was about. Yeah. But I was like, you have to be attacking this person. Why is he, like, I should be attacking this person for not? And I'm glad. Again, I'm really glad I didn't. Yeah. Um, I didn't know the Courtney Love no, slash Owen either. Wilson tie in myself. I don't follow that I, shit. So right they after, asked an innocent question about the tabloids. Like, well, well, what's the worst rumor they ever made up? Like, you know, all right, let's just yeah, shit on them for yeah. a little bit. That's all that was about. Right after the show, I apologized to Jimmy. I'm like, Jimmy, I'm kind of out of it today. I, I wish I was there with you because I would have went. I, I basically told Jimmy I would have went after him too because it was it was such a weird, like, just answer the dumb question. Who yeah. cares? But now that you have more info, then you understand where he was in this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. And I mean. Uh, Especially because. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we we got to play the game a little differently these days. And when someone goes, look, you get Steve Coogan on the show, but you really he would appreciate it if you didn't uh, mention Owen Wilson. We kind of gave our word, and we were pretty good with our word. And I didn't mind not mentioning it because of the obvious reasons. It's this, again, yeah, that's, he's that's not, not going to want to talk about something that could get him in trouble legally. Yeah, that's that's not that's not like a that. that's not a celebrity being a pussy. That's just common sense. So whatever. I was really mad at myself. Um, and I'm just, I'm just annoyed that this is, it seems so innocent. Don't beat yourself up, yeah, sweetie. But, but I also, on the other side, don't want a guy who I like, mm -hmm. just as a performer, uh, to think that I fucking brought him in like some fucking cunty radio guy to go, oh, let's ask the big question. Yeah. And just know you're not going to get an answer and just try to fuck with a guy. That, that also irritates me. I like me. when we lead some of these guys to the slaughterhouse. I'm Ted the uncomfortable interview I guy. I just wish I would have known. <laughs> I'm Ted. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I should just get my picture taken and stop trying to be an equal. <laughs>
You did get your picture and autograph, though. Yes, you did. What a ballsy move. <laughs> I didn't care. Get them all sweating. I got to see that picture of you shaking and sweating. What did I, he say after the show? I, I, I he ran him, out of the studio. I still didn't know I didn't know really by get to point. say goodbye to the guy. I still didn't know by that point. Right. So I said to him when he walked out, I'm like, dude, I wasn't trying to sandbag you. I thought maybe something weird happened in a relationship with Courtney Love. So that's all that was about. I'm like, I wasn't trying to sandbag you. He's like, he was just really quiet. He didn't say anything dicky. He yeah. signed the... He signed the uh, the, the, the DVD, he was cool Too about it. asshole. No, no, <laughs> no, he wasn't a dick. He was, he was fine. But I, I mean, I, I think on some level he probably knows that it wasn't intentional. At least I hope mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Because if it was intentional, I would have fucking been a, a prick about it. Yeah. But I was like, why is this uncomfortable? Like, I couldn't mm -hmm. get why it was. I'm, well, there you have it. I mean, now we can. They've said some bad things about Mr. Coogan. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, again, for anyone in Hollywood to blame anyone else yeah. for them partying is fucking ludicrous. Sure. Anybody who's partying, and I'm, you know, as me as a recovering addict, you know, you get partying because you want to party. That's it. I'm also mad, Jimmy. I'm what? mad that I, uh, I uh, started the rage uh, music. Nah, it's, well. Right when it was getting really good. <laughs> oh, I am so. I couldn't have been happier <laughs> when that music kicked in. I was like, I was, thank you, Jesus. I was, I really was debating in my head. It was like the devil oh. and the angel were on my shoulders. I'm like, do I hit it? Oh, this is no, good. No, don't hit this. I, um, because he was having a good time before that. He's, you know, he's again, he's a like, whatever, but he was having a, he seemed to be enjoying himself. But that, uh, it, I could just see the vibe completely change and get yeah. completely uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Hey, by the way, we got people, uh, you know, because you're, you're good at the interview, Jimmy. Tim H. from Columbus. I'm not good at the interview. I Tim suck. H well, that's what I'm getting at. I Tim know. H. from Columbus, Ohio writes, Jimmy's interview with Eric Clapton. So, Eric, how's your son doing these days? Oh. Oh, no. Dude, I did that with Gene Simmons the first time he was in. I'm like, so yeah. how about Star Stowe? And you laughed because you thought I was cause the name was so weird you thought I was joking. Yeah. Star Stowe was a, was a Playboy playmate, very sexy. Who he did a chopper photos shoot with. He was in the set. It was a really famous Gene Simmons shoot, you know, for Kiss fans. Mm -hmm. And then there was rumors that they were having sex, and she was so hot. And uh, well, you laughed when I said, "How's Star Stowe?" Because you didn't know, like, know she was a person. And then he goes, "That's not funny. She died." <laughs> so I asked the question, mm -hmm. meaning it sincerely. Yeah. Because you said to me, "How come you're not asking Gene any questions?" Oh, he laughs. Idols. Laughs, thinks I'm kidding. Gene thinks that we're laughing at the girl. Yeah. It's like, I am just... I should... Fuck her. Can we get that? I don't remember. Nah, friend. Yeah, who cares? Dude, Gene I don't Simmons even remember is a this. douche. Can we try to find that? One of the guys, could they find that? Because now I got to hear that. Well, he talked about her, but yeah. it was just a laugh because he goes, well, that's not funny. Right. I don't I'm... remember. I, oh, I, I do, vividly. I think I was laughing because that's all you had for your hero. You're probably right. And, and he thought, okay, now I get it. And he thought I was laughing because, you know, we're sick fucks. Uh, Chris Rabb writes, wow, Jim, you're having an odd day. Good I luck, am... bro. Love you, man. Uh... <clears throat> Get Greg out of the studio. Yeah, I really should have let that uh... just sit there. Because you honestly, got... and again, he kind of, oh, I got to so be honest, glad. he kind of scared me, that guy. Alan? I mean, I scary Alan. about him. Fucking I don't know. Did you think some... he was going to give you drugs? <laughs> yeah. Dude, he's funny, man. I got a weakness. <laughs> His fucking show <laughs> is funny. He's yeah. Like, funny, man. He's, it's one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. Alan Partridge show is hilarious. There was something about his eyes. Then he must be a good actor. There was something about his eyes that kind of scared me. Very dry. There's, yeah. some, there's some like there's some anger in those eyes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's there's fine. something going on in those eyes. A dry English thing. Mm -hmm. Some people can transcend it. Yeah. Others, uh, they just wow. They stay on that dry thing. You kind of you can't interview them. It's very hard. It's like pulling teeth, as they say. Well, again, sometimes... Or knocking him down their throat like Jimmy does. Uh, <laughs> it's unintentional, though. I, Jimmy, I know. I'm just teasing I know. with you. I, 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 well, I would almost... If it was, that would be fine. But I hate I hate that I was unprepared for something. I didn't know something. I'm just, it's a Why should you hate that on this day <laughs> as yeah. opposed to every day we're in here? <laughs> John Thompson from New York writes, You realize you're insulting a fucking genius. He had nothing to do with Owen Wilson being a faggot. Hmm. We don't know if Owen okay. Wilson was a faggot. I think Owen Wilson's gay. I don't think he's gay. It's always with chicks. Mm -hmm. I just, you know what it was? It was that Philippe Petit, whatever the fuck his name is. Philippe Petit. Afterwards, I was annoyed at myself because I like the guy, and I and I'm just, I'm kind of annoyed at myself because I give my, I give people I like way too much leeway. Mm. In this case, it was. I'm glad it happened that way because I would have felt like a complete cunt afterwards if I had gone after a guy, and that's what it was about. I would have yeah. felt like a total jerk off. So who do we blame for the prep sheet? Um, Sam made prime it Primetime Sam again, Roberts. Oh, He prime did in an email oh, mention that. So it's not like he didn't mention it. It did mention in an email. The prep sheet, th that last part of the prep sheet was 
was was fucking stupid. But the, mm. he did send an email, so I'm not gonna say he didn't because he did. Um, I didn't realize it was a link. I should have checked it. Um, Oops. Yeah, but again, I blame it. Primetime Sam Roberts for yeah. the prep sheet. That whoever wrote it, yeah. he wrote it up. It was shit. Prime the time. last one. Prime but time. the email was was handled properly, and that's my fault. Primetime. Primetime. And me being <laughs> the one talking on the air, it's ultimately my responsibility to fucking know that. Mm. Um, you know, can you picture? Fucking Charlie Rose not knowing that. And no, I don't want to be Charlie Rose, you fucking mm. cunts on message boards. I'm only saying that anyone, anytime you're talking to somebody, yeah. you should know what you're talking about. And I'm aggravated that I didn't. Well, I think uh, probably right there today blew your chance for the Edward R. Murrow Award. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I you're getting it this year. The Edward fucking R. Norton Award. <laughs> fucking belong where I belong. A bunch of fucking liquid shit and sewage floating by. <laughs> I uh, I'm just annoyed. There was, there, I was weird, there was a weird vibe with him as soon as he came in. Too. Yeah, maybe yeah, he was. seemed a little uncomfortable. We've been uh, rocking with the interviews lately. That one was just a weird one. That was our first it's weird one to... in a while. But he, but he was yeah. laughing and getting like it seemed like he probably expected a morning zoo crew. Yeah, that's what stuff. I think he did. Well, who expect. said that we were wacky? Someone might have told. Uh, that's probably a wacky rolling. Show. We were kind of we were kind of just talking, yeah. getting into it. And then he's probably like, all right, what's the vibe here? And there's guys walking in, taking pictures. It's a weird atmosphere to walk into. It's not like when you do an interview and it's just one guy and you. Yeah. When you walk in with a, a you know, what you would think would be a morning zoo, because you don't know, and there's a bunch of guys just kind of seriously asking questions. You probably <laughs> yes. Just like, yes, sir. Yeah, so, uh, freaks you out a little bit. Yeah. I was really irritated. And I know because I've been in different radio shows and been interviewed, so I know what's comfortable and what's not. Um... <laughs> So I wouldn't fucking, whatever. Baby. That was not. <laughs> no, it was very uncomfortable. But I'm annoyed that I fucking, uh, like, with that French fucking tightroper, um, he was being cunty about, we didn't know his name or whatever, and I should have hit him uh, for being cunty, but I, I honestly didn't recognize him. I'm like, oh, it's just who he is. Then afterwards, I'm like, oh, yeah, he was being a douche, the, mm. the Philippe Petit, and I should have fucking yeah. addressed that. I'm not afraid to have confrontation. I've had confrontation with no, people. No, we've seen it before. That. I love confrontation. It's you've not seen about it before. that. I live for, for, for confrontation. I tend to be more nuts. confrontational with, with, with fucking larger people who I think are trying to fucking alpha male me. Right. Yeah. I, I'm just really, I'm just whatever, man. Fucking disgusted so, with but myself. But how do you really feel, Jimmy? I'm I'm not really sure. Disgusted Don't with you myself. Don't beat yourself up. Disgusted yeah. with myself. You um, do. You bring your A game uh, once a month to this show. <laughs> and no, it's and the rest of every it's a day. Plus. Every day. And right. then something happens in one interview because of a mix-up in paperwork, and you're going to beat yourself up. I won't allow it, young man. I won't allow it. This just made it look like the two, like, because I was having internet trouble anyway yesterday, which, again, had nothing to do with me not reading that email, or mm. not, not going to a link. But, uh... Weren't you voted best interviewing boy? I was, but it was between me and a guy whose voice box had been torn out by a pit bull. <laughs> so he would just sign questions to people who didn't speak that. Hey, what were those emails we got? Did they say that Courtney had accused him of uh, I don't, being not, responsible I, for Owen Wilson? I would assume I, that yeah. would have been the uh, thing. I didn't Did they, uh, Danny? open I, the link. I don't have... Uh, uh, moron Steve Coogan. Moron. moron. Don't said, call him a moron. Uh, wait, wait. Went through enough today. <laughs> uh, promoting Hamlet 2, Hamlet 2, blah, 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Alan Partridge. Blah blah blah. Interesting email. Blah blah blah. Oh, you're looking at the blah, email. Blah, okay, blah. good. I'm getting there. Hold on. Blah, cool. blah 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 blah. Angst, angry. Blah 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 blah. Think he's got that temper thing? Here we go. Yep. Mm. Oh boy, maybe you should have read the email last night. Oh, I just glanced. Gee. I just glanced at it. Oh jeepers. Oh jeez. Oh jeez, oh, geez, geez. Margie. In August 2005, the News of the World stated that rock star Courtney Love had claimed to be pregnant with Coogan's child following a two-week-long fling the pair allegedly had while staying at the same hotel, although this claim has been dismissed by both parties. Mm. Now, that was on the prep sheet. Yes. Then the next, uh, Sam Roberts uh, sent an uh, email literally a minute later. Roland has said bringing this up would be a bad idea because he's seen other interviews go bad, and he says Coogan will just deny it as not true and close off, but I should at least mention it. When the Luke Wilson suicide thing came out, people said his drug use was because he started hanging out with Steve Coogan. Here's the link. So I read that. That's what I Again, read. Again, Roland really advises not to talk about it. Hence, it's not on the one sheet, but there it is. So I do believe Sam thinks that's two different stories. Yes. That's, to uh, me... That's how I read that. Because he put the Courtney Love in, like, that's okay. 
but this isn't the Owen Wilson thing. Right. So I, if I didn't go to the links, I, I read the emails. I mean, I'm actually I'm answering a lot of the emails and reading them. But if you're just reading the emails, to me that might have just went to a video link or whatever. He some usually that you know this is what you said it's about the the Owen Wilson thing. Now Sam Roberts, be honest. Did you think that was two I'm different sorry. stories? No, I could see in hindsight I should have uh, mm. in the email. What said, is a hindsight? That's when well, you look uh, back and uh, you have the um, the knowledge of, the of what happens, but uh, you can look back then and go, "Oh, if only I knew." Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. I should have specifically said there was a connection, but I knew that yes. if I didn't say Up. that there was a possible Height. relationship between him and Courtney Love, stupid that. People would have said, "Why didn't we know?" Shut the and fuck up. if you didn't know the Just other thing, you would have said that too. Because there was no way to mention this without him thinking we were going there. And again, this so is two different uh, Courtney Love stories. Exactly. He, mm-hmm. She claimed that uh, he got her pregnant. Yeah, right. And she also claimed separately that he had something to do with Owen Wilson's right. yeah, problem. Yeah. No wonder he wouldn't want to talk about her. Cause sure. It's all, she, you know, he, yeah, he pretty She's much a tattletale. He pretty much doesn't acknowledge the 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 Courtney name at this point. No. Uh, let's say hi to Matt on Long Island. Did we find the Gene Simmons thing yet? Or are we still looking, or did we give up looking? Gave up looking. Good. No problem. It's not like the new bosses are listening. Is anybody Matt on Long Island? What's up? Hold on, hold on. Is anybody looking for the Gene Simmons? Iraq. Who's looking for it? Okay. Have fun. Uh, Matt on Long Island. Hey, Jim, you're a great interviewer. You remember the time you interviewed the guys from X-Files and you asked them about their off-Broadway uh, uh, work? <laughs> I am the fucking worst. <laughs> All right, that was funny. i got to uh, give you that one. One of the greatest uncomfortable moments ever. I'm like, is he asking him about his acting skills? Yes, it's Chris Carter. <laughs> Chris Carter, right. Who's the creator. And Jim, that was a funny one. Though. On the off-season. So, Mulder, on the off-season. <laughs> he thought he was talking about or I could call him Scully. Did you really think you were talking to Mulder? Be honest. I thought that I didn't know the names, but I thought that they were two of the stars, like the main guys. Yeah, basically. yes. And I figured Duchovny <laughs> must be one of the other guys. Sure. I figured we got these two, and then there's Duchovny. Yeah. I don't know who the fuck they are. I still is he Scully or Mulder? I don't even know. Um, I don't. Duchovny? know. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've, Mulder. I've certainly yeah. have made my faux pas. Anthony's the only one perfect in this trio. Yeah. Thank God. But right. I, uh, Never have a faux- trip up. I I acknowledge I make some good. Faux pause, but I enjoy oh. when someone else faux pause. Oh, am I the worst? <laughs> I enjoy when oh, someone else Jimmy. faux pause. I'm such a fucking yeah, but you know what? I'm caught between. In this one, I should have known better, but I'm still annoyed at myself with that Philip Petit interview for not addressing the fact that he was being fucking cunty. How was he being cunty? He was. He just wa- It wasn't. We again. said his name. I'll tell you. I remember. And I, Jimmy and I, you weren't there that day. No, right? I was out. Oh. Jimmy and I, we we were big fans of this guy and. I even when I I said Philippe Petit and he 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 corrected me. Most people say Philip Petit, so I purposely was trying to say his name right. So I said Philippe Petit. And what what did he say? When he corrected us, dude, the nuance was so slight. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me! And at that point, I'm like, why aren't we ripping this guy's little voice box out of what, his throat? What was it like, Philippe? Something so subtle that only the French oh, would 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 him. know. Only the French listeners, Fall off a all building. five of them, would have known that we mispronounced this this douche's name. I'm uh, and to this day, yeah. I'm pissed that we didn't go after. I this do. Guy. I'm, I am too. <laughs> I am too. I'm mad at myself because. And again, like, I asked him about Alan. Robert or Alan Robert, Robert who's right. the guy who climbs. I'm like, well, you know, he's asking about another guy, and he was like, well, I don't know him. Just being a little faggot. And I should like, you're lying. You do know him. Because he's, he's French. I, I just, I'm really mad that I didn't dress the country. Oh, look at Obama. It's a big ass. What? What's her name? She got a nice Michelle ass. Obama. Michelle Obama has a nice ass. She has an ass that is just, she's wearing a dress too, so that goes in a little further by the bottom of the leg, nice. where the leg meets ass. That's a nice, nice ass. She's got a big ass. Jean in the trunk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you say? Where's my song, Danny? Come on. Oh, no. What'd you do? Yeah. Don't go beating yourself up, Jimmy. I'm disgusted with myself right now. I can't, Don't go I can't changing tell you. to try to please me. That's all right, because we're I all... I love you just the way you are. That's all right, because we're all disgusted with you. <laughs> you should be. Aw. Well, I certainly am. No. It's warranted. What? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fanboy faggot I am. And unprepared to boot. Be one or the other. <laughs> unprepared fanboy. Jimmy, Jesus Christ. But you got your picture and your autograph, but my I, friend. But I, I really yep. do. The show, the guy's show, the Put it right up next character to... is fucking 
brilliant. I mean, mm-hmm. it really is hilariously a funny show. Are you going to put your Coogan picture right next to your Madonna picture after you trashed her? But nah, the, we learned the wall that you of hate. A, <laughs> yeah, I don't wall. hate him. <laughs> I'm not I even annoyed at him. I'm annoyed at me. No. But we learned that you hate Madonna, but you have an autographed picture of her up in your apartment. I really do. I, I really do. <laughs> and, and, and she's right next to Derek Jeter, who you also hate, right? The wall of hate. <laughs> right, I love that. It's either Jimmy hates them or they hate Jimmy now. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. No more Mr. Nice Guy, man. That's no. It. And this is not about him. I, I'm glad I, it went the way it did because it could have been worse. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, I want an up top for that. No more Mr. Nice Guy for you. It's up top. Far. There you go, up top. I'm with Jimmy. No more Mr. Nice Guys. You? Uh, yeah, I've been too nice lately. Really? <laughs> Oof. <laughs> no one's going to want to come in here. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I must be sick today, though, because I was, I was like, man, I should have let that happen today. It was, you know what bugs me? It I was, was going to go, ask guy... him, ask him about Owen. <laughs> oh, Dude, shit. Can I tell you something? Hmm. I, I was there. I was so aggravated, not realizing the tie-in. Yeah, that I was there, and I'm 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 really glad I didn't do it because I would have felt like such a jerk off, like reading, like finding out all the facts afterwards. Yeah, wait, someone is reminding us of another interview you did. Oh, uh, I don't remember I this just one. Suck, man. Can we get a montage of Jimmy moments, Jimmy interview moments? You've got to have the dress about the dress when you got the, the dress. dress at the mall, uh, something with a dress. Yeah, love that one. Faggot. So we all have our great so Mr. interview Coogan. moments where we just suck a big fucking hairy hog. Yeah, Mr. but I Coogan's... have nothing but those. <laughs> no. Mr. Coogan, something about the drugs. The drugs, there was something about drugs. Oh, and the drugs. drugs. Uh, Pittsburgh. And that's Check why he sarcastically said when I asked about Elizabeth Shue, oh, yeah, we were doing drugs. Like, like I guess he was just being sarcastic because he figured that's the roller going Yeah. Going yeah. Why didn't we go? We should have went all in. We, we were slight in at that point. You know. might as well go in, all in. Didn't I'll, know. I'll tell you why. Oh, does this have something to do with the old Wilson thing? Nah, what was that about again? Because <laughs> we just meant, or Jimmy just meant, you know, the sex yeah. with Courtney. Not the fact that she said that you just about killed Owen Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> Holy God. shit. Damn. Let's say hi to Mike in Pittsburgh. Mike? Mike? Good morning, bu- 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 boys. Hey. Do you remember that mundane interview you did with uh, Craig's from Craigslist and how... Oh, hold on. Can I slow you down? That that always makes us feel good when you hear... Remember that mundane interview? That mundane <laughs> interview that we had to sit through out here in Radio Land? I thought he just remembered what day of the week we did it and <laughs> right. said that Monday interview. Right. I didn't think we were being insulted. <laughs> All right, yes, I, I sort of remember that mundane interview with the guy that started Craigslist, yes. Yes, and you kept saying, you kept calling him fag under his breath, and Anthony had to get louder and louder to cover up <laughs> Opie's insults. Yeah, oh, that's right. I, I've done that for many years. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing at all. Good he, job, Opie. Well, because he was being such a dick that day. I'm like, all right, I'll show you, I'll show you dick. <laughs> exactly. Prostitution is what we come there for, and he doesn't want to admit it. Oh, that's what it was all about. He was so downplaying the whole... Uh, uh, prostitute. Don't even call it prostitution. The the using Craigslist to hook up uh, angle. He was like, "Oh, it's a great place to go to get furniture and and an apartment." I'm like, "All right, but what about the sex thing?" He's like, "That is a very small part of what we're about." That's right. Thank you for the reminder, there, Mike. He probably has to say that because probably otherwise, he's that. knowingly let prostitution go on his. All right. Uh, All right. Can we can we get the boys together to do uncomfortable interview day? When can we get that together? Just pieces, not the whole interview, yeah. but just uncomfortable interview. <laughs> By the way, the Gene Simmons interview was in 2001. What? That was oh, a, you're, we're going way back. That was the first NEW. NEW. Oh, yeah, that's where that happened. Oh, well, now Iraq knows where to look. Tippy Tom was in that day. Jeez, I don't remember. Singing. It's definitely a good show, then. Yep. Yep. Tippy Tom, yep. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. People say you, you do a good uh, Osborne interview, though, Jimmy. Perfect every well, time. I, I'm just a fanboy. Perfect every time. I get nothing out of people, <laughs> which is fine. That's not what my job is. But then I shouldn't talk to them. It's fucking. I'm just. I'm, I'm just. I'm really for real. I'm just disgusted with myself right now, and I should be. Forty years old, like a faggot with a fucking camera. <sighs> you are so tough on yourself. But accurate. Yeah, very but I'm accurate. Yeah. No, the You're most too accurate tough person on I know. He's too tough on himself. Nah, the most accurate nah, person. I'm, I, but I really Jesus. am. I, I am. I fucking. Uh, I, I. I'm. I'm good to myself, and I deserve it. <laughs> and I'm fucking uh, harsh on myself, and I deserve that. I got a song for you. All right. Coin city yourself Aww. at home. 
<laughs> that did cheer me up a little. When are we going to have British sing that live? He's been singing that all night. <laughs> yeah, we need a montage. People are we're go, they're requesting montage of uh, uncomfortable interviewing. Oh, moments. yeah, we need that. We've all had them, so we could just pull them out. It doesn't have to be strictly one person. Jim Norton. We no, could, you know, we've all had them. We all have our weird techniques. Oh, of course. You, you like to ask questions with, with both your hands on your chin. So... Like this, Anthony. Does that mean? Yeah, because you. Do I do this? Well, it doesn't get, feel familiar. No, it's it sounds like you're doing that. Yeah. You get fanboy ish. Oh, what? No, when girls come in here, it's a total fucking write off for me. You, I lose my mind. You forget that you're doing a radio show with others. <laughs> I can't. Uh, I can't like ask real questions and stuff. They're all goofy, and I giggle like a chick, and my voice gets all high when I talk to the girls that I like. Like in movies? Yeah. I'm a fucking faggot. No. Not right. <laughs> Let's say hi to Ben in Arizona. Ben. Ah! <laughs> ben. Yes. What's up? Hey. Uh, I just wanted to point out one of Anthony's little faux pas uh, when he fell asleep <laughs> um, interviewing Drew Curtis from Fark.com. Oh, was, he, was that when he was in? Yeah. yeah. All right. Hasn't no. been back since, by the way. Wow. Well. Good friend of the show, and that, you know, all of a sudden Anthony turned into the other million people that were listening. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly a ball of energy. Fucking, yeah, I don't think that's you know, I, don't think I like that, the sight, but Jesus, you know. I don't mm -hmm. think that's good for the resume. And uh, they tend to fall asleep as you're interviewing them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to do that show where the host uh, could possibly fall asleep in the middle of the interview. Who makes up the headlines over there at FARC? <laughs> yeah, but you know what, man? You'll at least call people out. Like, in, 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 in that case, I don't think he should, could again, blabbering a dead point, but I, now that I know the whole picture. Yeah. But like when Star came in. Um, oh, I fucking went after you him. You really did. Oh, and, yeah. it's, and it stopped him from doing that. Like, he was being a, a dick at first, because I think he mistook our, us being Dude. nice to him as being fucking like, like, oh, we're, we're in awe of you. No. He walked in and said, kiss the ring. And yeah. basically what he was trying to say is, I have oh. now officially done the craziest thing in radio. Kiss the ring. I go, kiss my ass. Well, you called him out for being... And then, and then he we've was all, fine. Now, we've you, all done the call out. Yeah, but you on that one, you really called him out. And uh, oh yeah, I did play German speeches once. Ah, whatever. Oh right, with the guy from Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> Claire. Uh, oh. Uh, Robert to... Cleary. Cleary Clary. Something yeah. Something like that. What, what about the uh, that porno girl that was in uh, Deep Throat? We started playing the porno music over her her sister's phone call. Yeah. Oh shit! Wait, to raise money right. for her funeral. She was like dead. That. It was Linda Lovelace. Yeah, right. She had done Deep Throat, the I movie, know, and right. regretted it her entire life. She she dies. We get Linda Lovelace's sister on the phone <laughs> to talk about raising money for a funeral because she died broke and Opie starts playing porno music behind <laughs> and, her sister's and fucking and just talking. asking all questions about Deep Throat. Oh god, that was a bad one. Wow, that could be worse than playing the Hitler clips over... I haven't heard that one in a while. Robert, Robert Clary. Clary's uh, uh, interview. My favorite ever, though, as where I sit, I'm sure we all have our favorites. Uh, and you were lucky enough not to be part of it. The Ed Asner interview is still one of my favorites. Oh, favorite. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 well, I heard it. I heard the clips of it, uh, or the replay of it. Yeah, I was busy playing poker. Me and Joe Rogan and, and Jimmy, you were playing poker. Steve the Whistler was a good one too. <laughs> Fuck. I see that. God, did he just get? <laughs> I see that whistling douche in my neighborhood all the time. Do you? Yep. Does he whistle as he walks down the yes, street? He does. <laughs> yes, what about? He does. Uh, Shut up with your whistling. I remember there was a, a pretty lengthy uh, silent game with Mr. DVD where he kept calling. Oh back. yes, Mr. <laughs> DVD <laughs> was another times, I think. horrific interview. Uh, what's her name from uh, Laverne and Shirley? Cindy Williams. Cindy Williams. Oh, uh, Travis reminded me of uh, the toothpick guy that came up here. That toothpick day. guy. <laughs> uh, that's well, see, we've had some really horrific moments. Toothpick guy is one of my biggest disappointments ever. <laughs> I want to smash that toothpick. To smash thing his so toothpick. Bad, uh, and I just couldn't get him to, uh, to hand it over to me. Yeah. And then we spilled mustard on the Asian guy as he was coming into the <laughs> Oops, What's his wee shit? <laughs> That walk in the building with mustard all over his hair and his suit. <laughs> you didn't know where he came from. Probably thought a big fucking 
Big giant fucking Duffy bird <laughs> shit on him. Uh, we got away with that one, by the way. Yeah. Because he was trying to find out. Oh, he certainly was. Yes. You're right, Jimmy. We're trying to make you feel good. Oh, yeah, we're we're talking about other moments. Oh, no, you see what happens? I'm, I'm just, no matter what happens, we've all been douches. But I'm just really uh, just disgusted with myself in that area. You had your Chris Jericho moment. That was uh, uh, right it, up there, dude, man. I, it's that not, was right mm, up there. That was a good one. Guys like, uh, it, with, uh, that are bigger than me, for some reason, I'm more comfortable having confrontation with. Because you're know. a tough guy. And it's not that, though, at all. Yeah, guy yeah. could have murdered me. Yeah, it's, Jimmy's it's not a about, tough guy in front of a microphone. I don't know. I don't, I don't get, like, uh, like, ever, like, try to physical with them. Not, no, no. You fucking berate them with your wit. I just tend to get your... very defensive if I feel yeah. like someone is trying to use their size over me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why it's that way. Like, why would I be confrontational with him or with uh, the pen the first time he was in? Like, I don't know. It's, I'm just annoyed at myself for my inconsistency. I really yeah. am. It was a bad interview. Um, it, it was an uncomfortable interview, and uh, I just, I'm just mad at the way I did it. You're, you're, you're only human. I know. Can I am. You? Yeah. Um, sure. The TMZ kid is reminding me of the, uh, of course, Richard Jenny interview. Oh. But someone else is uh, reminding us about Jimmy's, one of Jimmy's greatest interviewing moments. Uh, the first Ramon bit when we were, when we were talking to one man uh, Star Wars guy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, one man Star Wars guy. <laughs> we were so awkward as he was doing his thing. Boy, have we had some real shit on That's, this show. Can we get some of these? I want to play some of these. Yeah. Like or at just least some, of these some fun moments. moments. Yeah. Just a moment or two. Yeah, a couple moments would be good. Yeah. Jeff Ross on the next Dance with Stars. I heard about yep. that. And he's really that's uh, legit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yep. completely. I read that too. Good for Jeff, man. He's his... really fucking. That's what. A, that's a big thing, man. That show is. We hate it, but that show is massive. But he's yeah. got a bum hip. Massive. He's got a bum hip, yep. and uh, I, I didn't. He doesn't seem the dancing type to me. We should get him on the phone and see what that's about. Mm. Um, I think Kim Kardashian is going to be one of the cast members, too. Mm, I am. Yep. Look at that ace. Yep. She got some junk in the trunk. Yep. Uh -huh. Jesse Ventura, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. 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 That, I, for some one reason. Of, one of your greatest moments. Under yeah, those circumstances, I'm fine. He took on an ex-Marine. That basically said, you know, don't sleep because you'll be dead. I, the, I Navy remember, SEAL. You got to sleep sometime. Let's yeah. remember that, Jimmy. Under the uh, no, but I'm not. I, under those circumstances, I'm, I'm actually uh, when it's a heated debate about something or an argument, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, but it just in like like this situation or the French situation, I'm just I'm shit. Mm. Hey, no, yeah. not as a person, but as, a, as an on-air person. Well, that's debatable, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Or Jimmy. <laughs> no, I believe, dude, a hundred percent. I'm agree. Beating himself up, but that, accurately, not for not for no. pity, but because I really am thinking this. Chester's liver is reminding us, and I don't remember this one. The speed reading interview or the speed reader interview. Oh, what, I kind of remember that. What was bad about that one? What, what did we do wrong with that one? I think the pages were coming out of the book. Not sure. Chester's liver. You got to help me out. I don't remember that one. The speed reader interview is a classic too. Why? Oh, the first time The Rock was on the show, yeah, it was really uncomfortable. Oh, that was. The Leslie Nielsen interview. But that, that should have got more legs. Oh, the Tucker Max interview, which got some um, coverage lately on, uh, recently on Gawker.com. Yeah, they did just mention that on Gawker. Someone else was, that someone was asking me about Tucker that. That fucking Tucker Max with his fake stories, and he's becoming huge because of it. So, uh, uh, they might even be making a movie out of, out of that book of his that mm. is full of so many lies, in our humble opinion. And mm. we called him out on it on our show. I, um, it was really weird because that moment we all realized at the same time, we were all completely with the guy. We were rolling, enjoying him very much. And then when you kind of feel like you're not in on it, like, like he's really talking to us like we're fucking dummies and we're going to believe this. Right. Yeah. What do you expect? Then you got to turn. Yeah. Yeah. Burp. Uh, yeah. 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 People are just saying, Jimmy, you know, don't yeah. beat yourself up. No, I should and I'll continue to because it's accurate. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not beating myself up like, oh, I don't have talent. I'm not a funny guy. But in this one, uh, my my self disgust is deserved. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Lee, of course. Yeah, that was a that was a solid moment. Yeah. We showed him. He's massively huge, and we're still fucking doing radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey though. 
We show these people in the end, don't we, Ann? Yes, we do. <laughs> Remember when we told The Rock that we'll be more famous than him? Yeah, that worked out for us, didn't you it? You didn't really say that, did you? Oh, yeah. Something like that. It got so ugly with The Rock. I'm like, you know, you're just like one of these. You're. I don't remember exactly, but basically it was like, you're, you're a wrestler. You're, you're going to. Come and you're gonna come and go. We'll yeah. always be more famous than you. We're so, yeah, we're such fucking cocky assholes. And boy, that worked out, huh? Ant? Oh, always. I think he's starring in his seventh blockbuster movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's never gonna work. And we lost another three markets overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. That shit Just made sense. Barreling towards success. <laughs> Just assholes. Oh. We actually told The Rock what, what was up. Yeah. You're doing that Q wrestling thing. This is where it's at, my friend. Yeah, you keep doing that. Injure yourself. You'll never get anywhere. Could you find what I said to The Rock? Okay, All right, we found the Gene Simmons thing, uh, Jimmy. So this goes back to Ooh. 2001. Uh, this was, the, was this the first time that, that you interviewed Gene Simmons? Yep. Because Ann and I, early on in our NEW career, we were lucky to have the entire band in. And we uh, you want to talk about uncomfortable, we were freaking the fuck out. And this was a little later down the road, a couple years later. Jimmy's now doing our show. And uh, we're laughing at Jimmy because, like, Jimmy, your hero's here. You haven't said shit. And this is how it went down. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene, thank you. Had a ball. This has been a pleasure, especially for Norton, who said nothing. Norton, was, come on, say something. I was just very happy to One sit question. Next what, what can I ask him? You've can I been, push in your cheeks? You've been a fan for over 25 years? Yeah, one question. Yeah, we met and I want to get a picture. There's not one question you want to ask him. Um, Something that he can answer. still talk to Star Stowe. Uh, you know, it's not even funny. Star Stowe passed away. Did you really? Yeah. Great <laughs> question. Well, that's the one name I remember Jesus. from the 70s. Star Stowe was a beautiful playmate <laughs> in 70-something. Uh, she <laughs> was ruined. gorgeous. She's never going to come back but, you know, she had a wonderful life, and unfortunately, uh, it didn't last long enough. I'm sorry to say. Uh, she was the girl from the, uh, I think, the Chopper poster. Gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Mm. Beautiful, nice human being, innocent. All right. Thanks for bringing the show down, Norton. I just, that's the <laughs> only Jesus. name I could think of. Oh, good job. God, do I suck? <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember that you laughed in that, but you didn't. He just thought I was kidding. You, who, I, who was laughing like during the whole thing? Was that just you yeah, now? Or? It's just oh. hilarious. Yeah, that, I added the laugh today. <laughs> she's dead. She's she's she passed she's, away. She's dead. Shut up, Jean. <laughs> Had enough of Jean Simmons for the love of God. And he came back though. Over and of course over he will. And over if he's got something to plug, he'll be again. back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Douche. <sighs> okay. Well, should we take a break? Well, if somebody's got to uh, piss or eat. Why was the Donna Dierico uh, or Derico interview uncomfortable? Sure. You guys got to help us out because we don't. We got memories like goldfish here. Remember that? I no. Know, I, and Chester's liver didn't help me out yet. Why was the speed reader interview uh, uncomfortable? I don't remember any of these. All right, we'll, we'll find out the answers uh, to those two questions, and we'll do other stuff after the break. Dweezler on instant feedback, Anthony. They yes. remember one of your uncomfortable moments. What did I did? How about when Ant asked Cal Ripken Jr. about Kevin Costner? Ah, see, because I didn't know about that situation. That was you, my friend. And someone brought up, why, does it, why, don't, why don't we bring up the uh, Kevin Costner thing? And I was like, I had no idea what it was. So I was like, hey, what's with the Kevin Costner thing? There was a real strong uh, rumor that Cal Ripken Jr. found out that Kevin Costner may have been with Cal's wife. And he was in the middle of a fine hitting streak, or a, or a, a game games played streak, yeah, right? Garrick streak, yeah. Where they decided to make believe the lights weren't working at the stadium, so he could actually go home and see what the hell was going on. Right. That was the rumor, and uh, Snope said no to that rumor. Yes. Snope said that's not true, but he doesn't want to talk about it whatsoever. And you brought it up to Cal Ripken Jr. Whoopsie. The great. Cal Ripken How the f Jr. I was supposed to know about goddamn Kevin Costner and Cal Ripken. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was some kind of a seedy little, you know, love triangle rumor. Uh, we got uncomfortable moments when we interviewed uh, people over the years. Mm -hmm. 
Looking forward to that. Well, because of the Steve Coogan thing that happened yesterday. So, uh, Steve, the Whistler, what we said to The Rock. I think I want to start with The Rock stuff. The Rock racist stuff. We got Mr. DVD, Linda Lovelace, the Ed Asner moment, uh, a bunch of others. So stay there. Opie and Anthony. Uh, O&A cringe moments. This uh, stems from the fact that we had an uncomfortable moment once again yesterday with Steve Coogan. The, certainly did. The star of Hamlet 2. And I, I heard there was some uh, smoothing over that was going on after the show yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I smoothed things over, hopefully? I don't know. I mean, it turns out we have the same publicist, which I didn't realize at the time. But uh, I emailed the guy in L.A. And uh, he in the back, he goes, hey, man, thanks a lot for contacting me and stuff. He goes, stuff happens. And, you know, I explained to him what happened. I think uh, people will expect uh, the radio host to be well prepared for every single interview but the fact is on this show uh not 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 so much at times <laughs> yeah not so much sometimes we step in a big pile of fucking <laughs> horse shit yeah that one we <laughs> stepped in with our teeth yeah sometimes it's intentional absolutely but that one was so unintentional yep. that's why it was so weird and confusing at the end of uh, the first half of the show yesterday but it brings back other uh, uncomfortable moments now a lot of these we are are recent, so we don't have to go down that road again. But uh, you got uh, The Rock, you got Steve the Whistler, uh, Richard Clary, Mr. DVD, Linda Lovelace's sister. I hope these are only cringe moments. Ed Asner. We don't have to sit through too much of the interview itself. I hope uh, Ed, they look like shorter clips, okay. so it looks like E Rock put this uh, together pretty well. And then Dax uh, Shepard, one of the many guys that banged uh, Kate Hudson. Oh, yeah. This was uh, pre Kate Hudson. Wait, Dax Shepard. I don't remember that one. Where do you want to start? Uh, Joe Rogan versus Daniel. Uh, how did Negroni? Yeah. The famous poker player. Oh yeah. What was that one about? That was about uh, his girlfriend breaking up with him and Joe Rogan talking about how it feels to th imagine her having <laughs> sex with a big black gentleman. <laughs> and he did this right in front of him. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a good place to start. That was uh, really bad. Our friend Joe Rogan. He's a good boy. Now, yeah. do you think now you broke up with her, you just think about other dudes just gorilla fucking her? Is that <laughs> <laughs> Who fucking killed me with the laugh? Wow, really? Whose laugh is know. that? And Asner's? Sounded like a certain lunatic. <laughs> now, do yeah. you think now you broke up with her, you just think about other dudes just gorilla fucking her? Is that, <laughs> does that haunt you? That's what I always think, I'm being honest. Whenever I break up with a chick, the first thing I think of is some other guy fucking stuffing her <laughs> into the corner of a couch, just fucking slamming it, coming in her face. That's all I ever think about. I think about her liking. You must. I think shit. Yeah. I just let her go. And then th that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you is you break up with a really hot chick and uh, and then during the the, the soft have period issues. where it hasn't hardened, some nah. other guy just. There's a book called Arousal. You should read. It no, explains like what that's all about. It's honest. It's honest. Yeah. It's it's just natural male I'm chimpanzee I'm, I'm, instinct. I'm so with Joe on that. Come on, man. man. You don't. It doesn't truth. bother you the idea not, of some you know, other guy fucking the shit out of her. But when you're thinking about not really. Her loving it. Her worshiping some other guy's cock. This is the woman that you love, and she's just got her tongue. Hung out and she's right. rubbing on her tongue, mm. and, and, and she's the, coming in her face and closing her eyes. It's dripping off her fake eyelashes. That doesn't bother one you. Other th one other thing bothers me, and I don't yeah. even know you. One other thing, the guy's black. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, God. It bothers me. And you're not spanking it to that thought? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Well, Voss was with us uh, yep. out there in L.A. for the poker thing. That's a that's a very good question by Joe Rogan. <clears throat> it is. You don't want to know that. Uh, nah, you don't want to. Uh... Well, un unless you were married to them for 10, 11 years, right? Well, then I really wouldn't care who the hell is doing what. <laughs> the bigger, the better. More melanin, the better. <laughs> well, that was uncomfortable because uh, Daniel didn't enjoy that uh, interview whatsoever. No. And we never heard from him again. And Anthony's a no. big poker player and uh, likes these guys. Actually, he did uh, email me. He did? A while back. Really? And said that he understood that I wasn't there. And I'm a big poker fan, and I was the guy that knew it. And he, he has a sense of humor, but he felt like he was just blindsided. He thought it was just going to be a goofy radio interview. He didn't know, like, what he was walking into. I don't know, you know, whatever it was. There's but, still a goofy radio interview. Yeah, but he didn't know it was going to be that goofy. Well, we didn't know <laughs> to that. To the extent that, it, you know, talking about his it, it recently ex-girlfriend getting banged <laughs> yeah like that. So I think it took him by surprise. He is a nice enough guy. He's a very nice guy. But so I think it was a little odd that uh, he was even on the show. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, more uncomfortable moments interviewing people. Which one you want to play? Dax Shepard. I forgot what that. I forgot what that was. I don't remember. We might as well play. Yeah, play it. See what the awkward moment was. 
<laughs> Did you do radio? On a Pabst Did Blue I? Ribbon. Yeah. No. I mean, I've done it to promote stuff, and I love it. You got the voice. Really? Yeah, you got a voice. Thank you. You've, you got, you've got the face for um, hand modeling. No, I don't know. Oh, You're boy. a handsome guy. That's what I was trying <laughs> to say. <laughs> Wow, we're off to a weird start. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> is not weird at all. Who is that? That's Dax Shepard. Uh, I don't know what he was going for there. Yeah. He's a handsome guy. He is. That. Not unlike Opie. Maybe on the edge of the... Uh, Why are you going after me? I'm is not. That going I'm after... telling you you're a handsome guy. You don't know how to take a compliment. I know. Opie was trying to fix it there. Yeah. You don't know how to take a compliment as far as your looks go. Well, what? If, a, if somebody you, put, you, says you're a good-looking guy, but it's a dude saying it, it's what? not. Well, that makes it twice as uh, impactful. Creepy. No, a, a girl, of course, thinks you're handsome, but a, a straight man so telling you you're, guy would tell you're easy on the eyes—that's the ultimate compliment. <laughs> Guy's confident in himself. <laughs> mm, okay, whatever. It's kind of him, what uh, Just picking you up. I guess. <laughs> Just being silly. Then we uh, we have Ed Asner. The Kristen Bell hang up. We haven't played that in a while. Oof, yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want to listen to here? Linda Lovelace's sister, Mr. DVD, Richard Clary. Richard Clary, man. I want to hear that yeah. one. I haven't heard that yeah, one. Yeah, that was real bad. Well, I think this was the day, the you know, back in the day when we were just assholes to everybody. Yeah, that was like what our, everyone expected, I guess. We had to adjust our tune just so we could get some like celebrities on our show, but we just we were just dicks to everybody. Yeah. We didn't even wait to see if we could possibly get along with the person. No instant fucking in for the kill. This was a biggie. This uh, this became a pretty big article in the newspaper. Yeah. This could have been uh, our firing back in the day. This was one of the close calls we had. Because we actually, uh, or I, I played some uh, some Hitler speech. Yeah, yeah. And my argument was, look, the guy, he's Jewish, and he had no problem taking a paycheck from Hogan's Heroes. From Hogan's Heroes, playing, you know, a sitcom. It's a sitcom with a sitcom Nazis. That takes place in a in a, in a concentration oh, camp. P-O-W Manny camp. gave me shit about right. this one. What? Manny Dorman, because he's he was Israeli. I think it's. Oh, shut the. F what? Wait, it was on Manny's radar back in the day? It was in the paper. Yeah. It, it, yeah, this it, was a biggie. He was very sensitive about the Holocaust. And, you know. the, the owner of uh, the Comedy Center. Yeah, he, who's he no never cared about anything. Yeah. He, he was a great guy. I was a pre ruled. He didn't know much about our show, so if it hit his. No, radar, he, loved it. he loved the idea of the show, I think, once in a while. Like that one. He was like, like uh, you know, playing Hitler speeches to a guy whose family died. He just. He was, you know. Oh, it's Robert Clary. I'm sorry. Yes, uh. Pierce Mark. I'm well, what'd sorry. you say? I thought you said Robert Clary. It says Richard on the thing, and I was oh, just okay, reading. Okay. I, I actually know it's Robert Clary. Now, wasn't this at the time that the uh, the war was going on? Well, I was I, I was born in 1926, and the war started in, in Europe in 1939. Right. Which means I was 13 years old when the war started in France. Yeah. When the German occupied France in 1940, then in 1941, we Jews had laws, we had rules. We right. Had to go, we had to wear a yellow star of David. We had, we had curfews. We could not do anything, and suddenly Jesus. we eventually we got all arrested and sent to concentration <laughs> camps, and mostly to. It's uh, to a, a gas chamber. Oh my God! So and I, I have like a twelve, a thirteen of my immediate family was deported. Yeah, and all, I'm the only one who came back. I was lucky to survive the three years I spent in concentration. Now, how how oh. how did you get? Uh, how did you oh. escape? Well, I was young. I was 16 years old when I was arrested. Goodbye. Opie. Oh. All right. Turn that off! Well, he was stupid enough to call back. How bad does he need to promote Wait, his book? Hold on, I can't breathe. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> oh. I am mortified. I cannot believe you played. You played. The... <laughs> wow. I forgot. He called back a couple times. Yeah, yeah. We were kind of. We kept getting him back on the hook. Yeah, yeah. And he, he got back on the line, and that one just put him over the edge. And, uh. Wow. That's, yeah. Well, awful. the whole thing was the fact that, yeah, he, uh, went through this, uh, uh, the, the actual real Nazis back in the uh, 30s and 40s. And him and his family, of course, uh, suffered, I would gather, from what he said. And then an acting gig comes along. 
and instead of having some principles and maybe thinking that the um, the Nazis uh, might not be the best subject for a situation comedy, <laughs> he goes right in there and collects a paycheck. That's uh, yeah. That's how we uh, explain it to the bosses back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Still uh, you know, <laughs> makes a good story. <laughs> Uh, I want to hear, uh, well, we got Steve the Whistler still, <laughs> The Rock, Linda Lovelace's sister. Can I hear The Rock? I, I wasn't there for All that right. One, the, the Rock was uh, uncomfortable. I wasn't this there This was one. the greatest blindside ever. Yeah. yeah. This actually goes with what happened yesterday for the most part. Uh, we didn't have the knowledge. We had, oh. uh, I forgot his name. He used to be a huge fan Sick of the show. Sick Boy. Sick Boy. Used to be, a, uh, maybe he still is, maybe changed his name, because... Man, you want to talk about someone like just disappearing after this? Sick boy uh, disappeared. Sick boy ended up going. Uh, uh, I think maybe even to get, don't don't quote me on this. Going out with and perhaps even marrying the famous Beba. Beba Spaz's uh, ex girlfriend. Wow, she the hot? famous Beba. Yeah, Beba right. was pretty uh, all right. She was right. tall, kind of strawberry blondish hair and stuff. But um, yes. Uh, sick boy ended up uh, hooking up with her. Okay, they're married. I don't know. Were they? Did they get married there, Steve? Mm -hmm. Yes, they did. They did. They yeah. did an icky thing. <laughs> um, you keep in touch with Sick Boy? Yeah, I spoke to him about uh, two weeks ago. He's How's uh, Beba? I just, just, uh, she just had her third child. I Get believe. the fuck out of here. Yeah. How fucking what long have we been on the radio? Fucking fertile sons of bitches yeah, they are. Huh? Um, yeah, she, she just had uh, the, their third kid, and uh, they live in the Midwest. Can we make in the Midwest? What happened? Well, like Where have we been? How old are we? What fucking happened? Did we just wake up in a time We've been machine? unconscious. Let's make a pact. Jeez. All right. Seriously, two more years. And then what? We shoot uh, each other in the head? I uh, don't even have to. We're just two more years. Let's, uh, let's put a limit on this thing. Yeah. Seriously. I'm not even joking. I don't want what else can we do with this dumb thing? Two more years. Okay. That's it. Steve, where did they go on their honeymoon? <laughs> <laughs> Is that fair? Two more years? Two years. That's all we need to do. Two more years. Jimmy, get HBO to hire you in the next two years. I'm hoping they hire me by September. Two more years, and then we do other things. I don't want to do other things. And we'll both. do his political talk, and I'll, I'll start spinning That's twofers I again. I'll do. I'm going to spin twofers again. You do the political talk. I'll do political talk with a twist. Right. We really have to put an end to this. I say two more. That's it. Two more. Yes, before I'm 40. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. You are... Um, no, I'm 27. Oh. According to We Fit, my friend, twenty-seven years young. That's my new age, twenty-seven. Did you and do We Fit? We Fit years. I'm twenty-seven. And twenty-seven in We Fit years. And every interview, when they ask me how old I am, I'm going to go, I'm twenty-seven in We Fit years. We Fit years. That's right. Yeah. I don't right. acknowledge the real age anymore. Uh -huh. I will only acknowledge We Fit years. So if you call up this show, you tell me how old you are in We Fit years. <laughs> I'm 57 years young. <laughs> young. I'll be 58 in March. <laughs> Get the word out. We made an announcement today. Two more years and that's it. Done. Because uh, we're going to renew with somebody. It might be CB Hell Radio at this point, but then two two more and we're done. What the hell does so much happen? I don't know. Three kids? What the fuck? What, two, could be twins? Baby. 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 They could have pumped out one a year. Gabing, gabing, gabing. Yeah, I know how it could happen, Jimmy. You don't have to actually explain the it. The vagina opens up <laughs> and the little, the little uh, life force tumbles out. <laughs> the life force. First, some spermatozoa is needed to That's fertilize right. the egg. It fertilizes the egg. And then the lady gets fat, and her body goes to hell in a hand basket, and does something that's going to uh, crash your car in 17 years, falls out of your front. <laughs> ah, shit. Let's say hi to Greg on Long Island. Greg? Good evening. How are you doing? Hey. What, do you, what do you mean two more years? Isn't it 34 days? Well, 34 days, um, we're in the cone of silence, but... Uh, Seems like Bob is also in the cone of silence. Uh, <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll get answers. I love just making Anthony nervous. Don't worry. It's just a joke. Just a joke. I want to hear the rock one. All right, we're going to play the rock. Maybe we'll squeeze three years, but two. I think two. That's it. What else you want from us? We've done it all. This is a very easy job. Um, no, it's also an easy job. Not working.
Yeah, that's that's, a, that's, yeah. the, that's the easiest <laughs> being, job of all. Being that. retired? I couldn't do that. I'd be out of my mind not working. <sighs> okay, here we go. Uh, what are we playing? The Rock. I'll work till I'm the Rock. God bless me. Going back, huh? going back to Sick Shit. Boy, um, I don't know if we were huge wrestling fans at this... Um, at this time, we, we were, yeah, we were, we were getting getting there. into it, yeah. But we figured it would be cool. We have The Rock; he's like big name, kind of. He was on his way up. He was definitely. He became a lot bigger, I believe, after our interview. But uh, we figured the sick boy. He runs a wrestling site, so this is perfect. We'll bring him in, mm -hmm. and when we're like faltering because we weren't the greatest interviewers back then, certainly, I think we're a lot better these days. We can at least go, Sick Boy, what do you got for The Rock? It makes it easy, right? Yeah, and Sick Boy knew a lot about wrestling because he ran a wrestling website. Yeah. There was a website that he ran yeah. that had uh, wrestling message boards, yeah. wrestling information, and therein lies the problem. Yeah. Listen to this. A showstopper. <laughs> You're about to hear a showstopper. <laughs> Uh, we got Sick Boy in the studio. He he's like a wrestling expert. You got a quick question for the Rock there, Sick Boy? He's been chomping at the bit all afternoon. Yeah, I was actually kind of curious about. It. Remember the uh, the MTV special over the summer? They had uh, the feature on Tony Atlas, who was your dad's tag team partner. I was kind of wondering if you saw that and what you thought about. It. They they kind of highlighted some of the the hard times that Tony's gone through over the years, and him talking about being so desperate that he wanted to kill himself and all that, and. Just what your thought on it was, you know, with your dad being his partner. Perfect question. There's a good question. Wonderful it's a little inside, question. but I mean, it's like, it's very in-depth, I mean, that question. <laughs> right. Uh, asking, it's relevant to The Rock. Yeah. It's relevant to wrestling fans. Sure. Asked by a wrestling fan. Very professionally asked, yeah. too. The guy did a great job. Well thought out. Well thought out. Right. And how does The Rock answer? Oh, oh, oh well, here it is. Well, uh, before The Rock actually answers that, just out of curiosity, uh, you know, The Rock's heard of your name, and The Rock's got a question for you regarding your website. So. <laughs> oh, no. Nervous actually, laughter. I had no idea it was you uh, who, was, who goes by the name of Sick Boy, but right. uh, it was brought to my attention last night from the office that your website carries a lot of racist comments, and I just want, uh, I want to hear about that. And for the most part, I just want to know, it sounds like all you guys are friends, and if you guys had known that this is a guy who has racist comments <laughs> hold on, on his hold on. Uh, website. Hold on. Do we completely sell him out here now? <laughs> we well, don't know this motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, but in all, I mean, it makes better radio if we were selling him out. I had no clue. I don't think you had a clue either. I didn't know about the, the that The Rock knew no, that there was no anything clue. like that. But, but do we now go like, because here's The Rock's point. He sees us all hanging out. He thinks we're good friends with him. It was actually the first time he had ever been on our show mm -hmm. live. We'd had phoners with the sick boy, but he'd never been on the show. So he was actually sitting there, and The Rock, I guess, was under the impression that we, you know, we're all buddies. Well, he's in the studio. Yeah, he's in the studio. We're all laughing and stuff. So The Rock then uh, wow. put put us into the whole situation with that. And I love how The Rock. Just called himself The Rock yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, The Rock, and even when he's serious, he's like, well, look, The Rock <laughs> yeah. wants to know, because The Rock has a question about the uh, website, and The Rock was very upset with it. It's like, well, bring him in. We'll talk to The Rock. Here we go. There's a guy who has racist comments on his uh, website, and if, in fact, you guys are behind that. Oh, I've seen his website a few times. He's got a, a bunch of writers on there, and uh, I think they just open it up to everything. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think there's anything ever been racist, no more than any of the humor that goes on on this show. Well, hey, now, don't, well, don't blame our show. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he sold us out, motherfucker. Yes, he did. <laughs> I mean, hmm. I've, I've never seen one thing up on, uh, up on my site that, that would ever be racist, because that's not, you know, that's not how I was raised, and that's not how I would run a website. <laughs> well, it's on there. Oh, geez. Well, I haven't seen it on there. If it's on there, it will absolutely... The it. Rock says it's on there! But, you know, I, I absolutely do not condone, nor do I, you know, support any of the statements made. By, and <laughs> if, you know, somebody on there has made racist comments like that, they're absolutely going to be fired. Can I be excused? Whoa. <laughs> really? <laughs> hmm. Wow. Oh, Jeff. All right. Well, for the most part, it's one of those things where, I, again, I was contacted, I was made aware of it, and the, uh, the office was made aware of it, and uh, and quite frankly, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want to answer your questions. And if you guys have anything to do with this guy, I quite frankly don't want to have no, no, anything to do with honestly, you guys Honestly, I've, I've never read any of that stuff on the site, and that's the yeah. honest truth. 
You guys I, seem uh, to be saying, look. Dude, I uh, was scared for my life. I could hear it in my own voice there. But now you were uh, answering honestly. Uh, I, please hit The Rock uh, please. doesn't want to talk to you. Is he in studio? Please, please right. hit Anthony. Could we get yeah, Dwayne? Right there. Yeah. Oh, shit. I thought he was please. on the phone. No, oh, phone him. We'd have told him to go fuck himself. My my whole thing was how uh, survival. Just that, that, that hopefully he'll he'll hit Anthony first, giving me a chance to, yeah, oh, to get oh, out, of the the out of the room. Fuck, he was in the room. I'm no fronting, man. I was fucking that scared. That was, uh, yeah, and he was definitely serious and definitely pissed. Not backing down or anything. I've never read anything like that. And that's the God's honest truth. All right. Well, I believe it's there. I'm not going to lie, but, you know, if you say it's there, but. I was pretty much there, you know, for the most part. Again, I was brought aware. It was brought to my attention last night. Stand on the phone for a good couple of hours and uh, made the publicist aware, and I, I had no, di no idea it was him, but. Uh, oh, boy. Appreciate you guys having me on. Thank oh, you. Okay. Uh, Got to thank The Rock for stopping on by Thanks, today. <laughs> and The Rock left the room. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Rock's going to leave now. For the first time, I think, since that day, live on the show, Sick Boy. Sick Boy! Hey, bu -bu -bu boys. So oh, wow, look at that. So you're still listening to the show? Time, man. You're still listening to the show? We had no idea. Are you kidding me, man? I never stopped listening to you guys. No All matter right. how hard you threw me under the bus. <laughs> well, that's, hey, you tried to sell us out with the rock there. We just noticed that one. Hey, nothing any more racist than these motherfuckers say on their show. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm fucking stupid? Was, I don't know if you guys remember, he was standing two feet away from me. Yeah, he certainly was. He really was. There's a video of it up, uh, if you can find it. Uh, uh. Uh, if you can navigate through Foundry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the old favorites. Hey, Foundry. Dude, you married uh, Bubba? Try and, try and search for the video. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. So you're married with three kids now? Yeah. Wow. That is weird. Three man. kids. How old are they? 27. Uh, Yes, uh, two, one, and a newborn. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. We just got started. Yeah. Well, the weird thing is that uh, as tragic as that day was for me as a wrestling fan and as, a, you know, sort of what I hoped to be an up-and-comer as a guest on the O&A show, um, that was actually the day that I met my wife was uh, in the studio. All right. Yeah. Baba. Was she dating Spaz at that point? Yeah. Oh wow! And uh, I, we had met briefly once before at at some stupid wrestling promotion thing that Spaz did. Right. Uh, but it was just like a real, you know, like brief encounter. Right. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It was just some just by sort of luck, you know. We sat down. She was there with her brother, and uh, we well, just hit it off. All you really had to do at that point was make a coherent point yeah. or talk in a manner that. She understood, <laughs> and you and you were batting a thousand over what she yeah. was going out with at the time. Good old Baba. Yeah. <laughs> how long? You, really, how long have you guys, really did live up to the name Spaz? How long did you guys? Uh, how long have you guys been married now? I've uh, been married for a little over three years. Fuck! Wow! Nice. And uh, yeah, we've been together since uh, I think like two thousand, two thousand one. Wow! And whatever happened to Spaz? Do you know? I have no idea. I've heard By rumors. By the way, this doesn't mean that, that Spaz needs to call the show anymore. He's dead to us, <laughs> but I'm just I've wondering. I've heard rumors that, that he's actually a cop now and that he's carrying a gun. <laughs> no <laughs> fucking way. Fucking Swear to God, I, I, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard that he's a cop in Rockland County, so if you live in Rockland County... Just pray you don't get pulled over by that motherfucker. You were speeding. Uh, I have to write you a ticket. <laughs> nice. Douche. Yeah, nothing, nothing scarier than the thought of him with a gun. And are you in the Midwest now? I heard he was working yeah. at Banana Republic or something. I heard Home Depot. Yeah, I really did. Yeah, every, you know, everything that I hear about him is different. Uh, I remember he had his own website for a while. He was trying to promote himself when you guys first got on XM. Well, the worst thing was the fact that uh, he tried to sue us. That was like the, the mm -hmm. straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. I was yeah. like, what the fuck is it? What? Yeah, he quit the show. He quit because he didn't want to be known as Paz anymore. He wanted to be known mm -hmm. as Kevin. Which, you know. And then and notice he, how quickly Stinky took Tato. over. Stinky got right in there. And is then, Stinky still serious? I believe so. Is yeah. he? We might run into Stinky? Yeah. Um, yeah, the thing with Spaz, I mean, you know, uh, it's been a long time, but at the at the time, he gave us amazing radio. 
Yeah, and, yeah. and he just great. didn't want to be spaz anymore. He actually thought he could be a, a producer for a radio show. We're like, that's great, but uh, trust me, the spaz thing is really working, and it could really turn into something. No, yeah. and then he goes, I don't want to be called spaz anymore. I demand to be Kevin. Kevin. Or I will tender my resignation. And he wrote a retarded resignation letter. Yeah. <laughs> I think we still got that somewhere. And then, yeah, I believe there was some kind of lawsuit that he was attempting. Yeah, attempting that he's some lawsuit. And we're like, you know something? Go fuck yourself. You're going to try to sue us? Right. That All right. is an absolute waste. How cool is that? Sick boy still listens. I know. Nice. Oh, yeah, where are you I living you in the Midwest? Absolutely love you guys. Love hey, where are you living, goddammit? <laughs> yeah, where are you living in the Midwest? Uh, I'm out in Ohio now. Oh, Ohio. Ohio. Um, A city or suburb? Uh, suburb. Oh, okay. All right, very it's nice. nice. Not crazy enough to live in the city. Mm. All right, sick I live, boy. I live in a very lily white neighborhood. Yeah. All right, man. Well, keep in touch. Do you still Absolutely. do the wrestling do. thing? Uh, no, I, I mean, I still I kind of follow it, but uh, like the last like six, seven years, really all about MMA for me. Yeah. 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 Big, big UFC fan. So. Well, we had uh, Dana White on. White. We had Dana yeah. White on today. Yeah, it was awesome. Are uh, you the one that got mad at me on the message board because you thought I was avoiding Tim Sylvia questions last time? Oh no, absolutely not. Okay, thank you. How, how could I ever get mad at you, Jimmy? I don't know. I'm sweet. Exactly. You'd be surprised. Oh, oh, Jimmy's love the sweetest disposition. That's Do what he know, was voted. I was voted boy <laughs> with the appliest cheeks. <laughs> 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 well, it's good that we could have this reunion finally after eight years. Yeah. Very good to hear from you. Glad you're still listening. Yeah, say yeah, awesome say hi to... And, and please remind us of your wife's first name. Erica. Erica, Erica right. right. Okay. Say hi to Believe Erica. Me, yeah. The first year that I dated her, my mom still called her Beba. <laughs> Beba. God, was that fucking funny. When Beba. Too but uncomfortable. Beba. <laughs> trying try to live down the awfulness of dating that douchebag. My mom's called her fucking Beba. Ah, <laughs> shit. Shut up. We got to bring back some of those spaz okay. bits, man. Beba. I'm telling you. Some of those spaz bits, as much as bad blood, were just ridiculously good. I wonder how they'd hold up, tell you the truth. I think a few of them would. Yeah, very probably. Good. They'd still be fucking funny. Uh, we might uh, throw a couple on the channel in the near future. We'll see. Hanging hey, from a, a cable in a Spider-Man suit trying to open the bank vault to make the perfect crime. Well, the best one ever was... <laughs> what a douche! The best one ever was uh, when he got a new credit card and maxed it out in two days. <laughs> Buying boots and fucking... What else was it? He stayed at the St. Regis. <laughs> he stayed at the St. Regis <laughs> one night. And went on a shop. His Metallica t-shirt. And yeah, he got butlers to iron his Metallica... His heavy metal t-shirts he was so in debt <laughs> it was unbelievable holy shit he was the king of fucking rockland county white trash well, oh he no came up doubt. with the whole giant mosquito thing yeah encephalitis oh, yeah. and getting peed on from the sky yeah and... the, the construction workers were peeing on him on a hot <laughs> summer day right. when every air conditioning on, uh, on every building is on <laughs> it couldn't have been uh, water coming out of the air conditioner yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stupidity cool. like that comes around like once in a lifetime. As yeah, far as radio gold is concerned. He is the Haley's comet of stupid. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. oh, it's on YouTube. Spider spaz. Look at him yeah. <laughs> committing the perfect crime. <laughs> you have to make. A uh, centricized, what was the hole? A perfectly symmetricized, a perfectly <laughs> symmetricized hole in the safe. <laughs> He's out front of the building. We're watching this. this was before all the Spider-Man movies. Oh, we're Jesus. A, we were ahead of our time. <laughs> what a complete oh, ass. Fucking. What? <laughs> oh, and they had all those painted cows around the city? Yeah. He's riding a cow in a Spider-Man suit. Yeah. As people just berated him. Whenever he went out, people just fucking threw shit at him. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys God. remember the fucking, the, uh... The show, I don't remember where it was at in the city. Uh, you guys did a, a, a live broadcast. Uh, Stephen Lynch performed, Sammy Hagar performed, and uh, Spaz was running around. He kept tripping, going up and down the stage every time he, he, you guys sent him to get something. So Opie actually made somebody go out and get a helmet for him to wear. <laughs> Not a cocky helmet? <laughs> yeah. He didn't wear a fucking helmet to the entire <laughs> fucking retard. Side of the stage laughing the whole fucking night. Yeah, <laughs> right on. Thank you, sick boy. Uh, Anytime, guys. We got to move on. Keep in touch, all right? 
Absolutely, bro. All right, there he is, uh, sick boy. Still listening. That is really cool. Uh, Joe writes, uh, favorite spaz bit, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Oh, that was good, that yeah. Would, that would definitely hold that up. That would hold up. We'll figure yeah, it out. We'll have to go through a few of those. Maybe we'll throw it. There was just so much lives. bad blood for so long with that uh, bullshit. There was, but, a little, uh, there was a lot of crap yeah. going on with him. So, yeah, listen through them, see if there's some funny shit. Because <laughs> just thinking back of the perfectly, perfectly symmetricized hole. Yeah. <laughs> We'll play. Oh, maybe we'll play one tomorrow. I can, I can pick a lock on a seat. <laughs> Didn't he say something like he had to, he had to repel up or something like it was the complete opposite of yeah. what repel meant. <laughs> what repelling is? Yes. And then repel up. And oh, here it is. Look. <laughs> ah, he's hanging from a cable. <laughs> what a complete ass. Oh, and and there's a little safe. This was like a Mission Impossible thing, and he was supposed to open the safe yeah. just by using his ear yeah. and, and hearing the clicks of the tumblers, yeah. and he guaranteed he could do it, and of course he didn't. Well, Mythbusters couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had, uh, we had uh, like special uh, like uh, stunt people come in to like, uh, rig the studio so he could hang from the ceiling. Yeah. See, everyone shit. is saying Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, hysterical. Yeah. Do we have that bit? What? All right, he you know going to find so, it and see if it's worth playing. Uh, we'll do it tomorrow if someone reminds us. You know what's fucked up? There were certain instances where the news would report things that he came up with. Like, remember when he said uh, a, a huge airplane full of kitty litter should fly over hurricanes yeah. to absorb up all the moisture yeah. and kill the hurricane? And then we used I to read laugh the, and, and laugh we would laugh. He'd come up laugh. with these fucking off the wall things. Robots in the operating room is not safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember he'd come up with all this shit. And it was like, I read in the paper one day that they were thinking of taking some kind of moisture absorbing shit and dropping it from a plane into a hurricane. I'm like, how the fuck? <laughs> yeah, to knock down the force of the damn yes, thing. I came up with that idea. Or aim microwave ovens at the uh, the tornadoes to dry, up. To dry up tornadoes. <laughs> All right, E Rock's got a job. E Rock's gonna ah. see if, if he can find a couple that are worth playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, what? You got one more thing? Or well, I, I, oh, yeah. Eric was bringing up the, the one where uh, you put his paycheck in the toilet and took a shit on it and made him dig through it. <laughs> <laughs> we were mad at him that day. Oh, that was funny. And we Holy and we can't shit. understand why he didn't want to be spaz anymore. Yeah, we're a bunch of I, idiots. I am Kevin. All right, hey, uh, I think we have time for one more cringe moment as we were interviewing people. We got Ed Asner, uh, Kristen Bell, Linda Lovelace, oh, the Mr. Sister. DVD, or Steve the Whistler. The one we'll, we'll do one more, and then tomorrow we'll do the rest of them. Linda Lovelace. Mm, Want to do that one? Yeah. I like Steve the Whistler myself. Which is longer? Maybe we could sneak to one. Okay. Well, let's see. We'll blow off line of the day and get this over with. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Linda Lovelace's sister, of course. Uh, Linda Lovelace from Deep Throat died, and. Uh, and her sister was trying to raise money, I think, to bury her for the funeral or something. It was pretty serious crap going yeah. on. Yeah. I don't know why she called our show, but this is how it went down. Uh, a fund is being set up. Yes. And, <laughs> and this fund is for? Uh, Linda Lovelace Memorial Fund is going to be set up in lieu of flowers. Uh, in <laughs> Right. Holy shit, okay. That was bad. Her dead, she's trying to raise money for her dead sister. All right, well, do we have to go on? Yes. Yeah, all right. In lieu of flowers, uh, into an account for her grandchildren's college fund. Right. And, uh, uh, well, now here's another tip here. Her funeral expenses are being covered. Oh, oh, they are. They are. They are. Uh, I'm just reading my notes from her sister-in-law. Uh, her first, um... Yeah. What do you call it? Check. Oh, good. So... She so. was on disability, and uh, it came the day after she died. <laughs> but anyway, she has her sister-in-law out there who's um, handling all of this and doing very well. But she has said that people are calling her and wanting yeah. to donate and so on. Yeah. So if you want to, I give you the account number, the name of the bank. And well, we we shouldn't uh, you know have that kind of information uh, put put out on the air. I don't think. But well, is I'm... there a phone number, perhaps, or uh, uh, somewhere where people might be able to get in touch and, and send a donation? Are you are you okay? 
You can send a no- donation to me, and I can forward it. Okay. If you want to, that's entirely up to you. Right. Well, um, I can give you the name of the bank. The name of the bank. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, give out the name of the bank. Uh, if you're just tuning in, Linda Lovelace. Um, uh, died tragically in a car accident on Monday. Yeah, and we're just uh, there's a fund, and we got Barbara on the phone. Her, uh, yeah. her loving sister. You're you're the older sister. Yes, I am. Ah. We lost another fourteen no! years ago. <laughs> anyway, are you ready for this? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> all right, Andrew, you owe me a thousand. Yes, <laughs> Barbara, you're right. I'm right. Yeah, Cindy, yeah. where's the account number? Is this it? Yes. Okay. The account number is eight three two eight eight three eight. Oh, Hunter! Oh, okay. yeah, give it. And I want to thank everybody from coast to coast, north and south, who have called here and who send their condolences. Right. And she was a lovely girl. I bet, Barbara. Well, thank you so much for uh, spending a few minutes well, with us today. Okay, thank you for calling. Bye, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Jesus fucking Christ. brutal <laughs> brutal uh, wow nice you want to leave it there you want to try to squeeze steve uh the can we whistler? Do it? is it possible we could do it tomorrow morning steve the whistler how long is it because I, li- I love the it. whistler is fucking yeah right up there is one of my favorite moments ever on this show fucking <laughs> steve the whistler i just like it early tomorrow all right we could do that. Yeah, we'll do that. We could do Steve the Whistler tomorrow. Okay. And Mr. DVD, I remember, is really good. <laughs> and what? <laughs> Went to Andy. Oh, I'm just laughing at everything. Just <laughs> that whole bit, and then Eric walks in with his stupid WWE t shirt, made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Florida Steve uh, writes Why does Opie say that Andrew owes him $1,000 in the call with Linda Lovelace? Um, first of all, I don't know who Andrew is. I think he mu- must have been a listener. Mm-hmm. Daring me to, to oh to play that right to play that clip yeah oh that I do remember but I don't remember who Andrew was line of the day we'll do more of that tomorrow and maybe a spaz bit I don't, have the XMers ever heard spaz no probably not fuck really I think I think the only time they ever what? heard him when, is when he called in on like the fourth or third or fourth day when you guys were on the air and we hung up on him yeah. <laughs> said goodbye funny boy yeah. Everyone's begging for Steve the Whistler now. Uh, tomorrow we got we got shit to do. Actually, Anthony yeah. actually hid Jimmy. Jimmy, pretty- that was uh, horrendous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very <laughs> awkward. Horrendous. Very awkward moment. <laughs> He's trying to get some real whistling uh, done, and I decide I need to whistle with him. It was just so oh, god awful. Oh, he was the worst. <laughs> All right. Uh, line of the day is sponsored by Carbo Night or Ca- Carbonite. Carbo night. I don't know. I want him to spell it right. Yes. So I say carbo night. But then the night is spelled differently, right? Right. Oh boy. Carbo nitty. Carbo nitty. <laughs> sure. But then they're going to think two e's at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Oh, well. Well, it sucks to be you. You figure it out. <laughs> I know they back up your computer hard drive so you never have to worry about losing any of your files. Yeah, of course they do. Carbo night. Night spelled uh, the other way, dot com, promo code XM. Here is a runner-up line of the day. Because he rolls them in such a way, he's getting he's getting everything oh, yeah. of the man. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean? It's like a man Rolodex yeah. flipping <laughs> in your face. It's like the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, people are suggesting that we play the long version of, of the Steve the Whistler bit. There's a long version? It's really long. Really long? It's probably the entire interview, yeah. Has that ever played E Rock? Yeah, it's played a few times, but it's the a real long? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe we uh can we uh maybe we uh hmm can we uh maybe we hmm can we uh maybe we uh hmm yes. can we uh tomorrow at eleven maybe or something. Tomorrow. All right. Uh another runner up line hmm. of the day. He just doesn't like baseball. And and I don't like the baseball. queen. Thanks. Your man. queen's stupid. <laughs> And she looks like a pig on your money. Yeah. So's our queen. We can just call, call her an executive producer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just multiple times every day. Uh, every he just wants to work. Day. He just wants to waddle around the office. He just wants to come in. 
do is work and leave. Yeah, that's right. Just, just what? <laughs> what? Why are people looking at me weird when I say do is work? <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally, that's what I want him to do too. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 come in, do your work, and leave, but yeah. not in that order. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Hey, another runner-up line of the day. Teen Wolf, he was originally a wolf, and then it looked like he was a dog with fleas. <laughs> <laughs> or a dog that just got rained on and came in the house. <laughs> God, we gave him an XM show today. What's wrong with a us? A little bit. Take our temperatures. By the way, uh, people are uh, mentioning other cringe moments. We're just we're doing some of the old school ones. Yeah. yeah. Because people coming up with the Dr. J uh, Jody Gold when she called in about Heath Ledger. Oh, that yeah. was terrific. But we were going way back. I, I don't remember yeah. half that shit we played oh, no. today. No. I remember the moments, but I don't remember them specifically. Yeah, right. the uh, details of them kind of fade with time, and you forgot how fucking bad they are. Oof. All right, listen, I, I've been reading instant feedback. I'm, I'm willing to make a deal here. It's a very simple deal. Hmm? E Rock, uh -huh. long form Steve the Whistler. Can we play it right after the break? Yes. We'll play it right after the break, but that means you got to bear with us tomorrow when we play it for uh, the shorter version for the, uh, for the uh, other tomorrow side. Tomorrow morning, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't want no bitching. Yes, sir. You'll get some. I know. They'll go, ah, you played this yesterday. Just played it. Were you calling it in? What's the matter? Lazy day? Fucking day. Shitty. Do I, uh, what do you Shitty. say, guys? Someone talk for the listeners. Is this cool? Long version right now, and we'll do the short version tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good idea, because I can listen to it now and then not tomorrow, or vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> Let's listen to something else. I kind of want to listen to Steve the Whistler. We have a freaking meeting, though. Yeah. yeah. I want to listen to this. Burn it to CD for me, Rock. Do we have to go over there for the meeting? He's here. No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Where? Right Where is he? Yeah. Hey. Where the fuck where are you, you All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Teasing, of course. Whoa, whoa. And uh, let's not forget this disc for tomorrow. There's other ones yeah. worth playing. Ed Asner. Oof. That was a good one. That was, And Mr. DVD, I know, was really good. I don't remember it, though. That'll be worth playing tomorrow. I you guys, you guys would... Uh... I don't remember. I have to tingle. You kept hanging up on him, and he kept calling back, but you over did it, like, over 50 times. Over <laughs> he would over keep again. calling back. Sounds good. All right, there you go. Greg Sletter from Long Island is talking for the listeners today. He's representing the audience. Florida Steve is in on it. Somebody from their mobile device, yes. And Bobby D from Brockton says, good idea. It's cold in the D. A lot of people saying, great <laughs> idea. But you know the feedback will be, ah, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, you got to do the hands like you're typing. <laughs> right. uh. <laughs> less hating lately, though. I like that. Yeah. I like the less hating thing. Mm hmm. It's appreciated. They have nowhere to do it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. All right. I didn't forget that we still have uncomfortable cringe uh, interviews to play. <gasps> Ooh, oh, yeah. I didn't forget. I did. You did? Yeah. We have uh, the Dax Shepard. Or did we play that one? I don't remember. I don't either. Yeah. I'm getting word that we played. Okay, then uh, we got Ed Eisner still. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the Linda Lovelace. That was terrific. <laughs> we, we have Mr. DVD and Steve the Whistler. Yeah, these are uh, these are interviews that we have done over the years with um, celebrities and non-celebrities alike. Where they but what uh, one thing they all have in common: we were assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Can I play the Ed Eisner? Please. This is my favorite. Ed Asner, the great Ed Asner. Yes. Lou. He was Lou. Lou. Lou Grant. Lou. I think Hope is mocking uh, you, Lou. Yeah, it was. Uh, you were too busy playing cards, and yeah, I was. Uh, we were playing a poker tournament, and you guys were broadcast, and I was playing. And uh, Ed Asner came up. I missed my chance to have an interview there. Interview Ed Asner. Well, you will get him next time. But uh, well, yeah, there'll be a next time, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was shot to shit. <laughs> And uh, it, was, it was me and Rogan, and I think uh, Jimmy. Were you even there? And Voss was there, sure. And you were there too. I'm Voss. Voss I was cringing. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think was going? Uh, <laughs> you. You trying to get rid of me? Yes. What are you of. doing, Ben? Oh. <laughs> ben, what, what, ben what are you doing? Sign language. What's the sign language? Uh, Ed. 
That's Ben. And, and, He's our producer. And he decides when uh, a guest is uh, getting a little too boring, and that was the sign what that the that he oh, okay. usually gives. And, uh, More what's disrespect to him. <laughs> yeah, you just pretty much told him, look, uh, he gives the sign when people are boring. Yeah. And he just gave the sign. <laughs> yeah. What do you add to this there, Iraq? Um, it looks the same. Nope, those two right there. More Linda Lovelace? No, Linda Blair. What'd you add to it, Iraq? Oh, Linda Blair. Iraq, whatever. did you add anything to it? Oh, the Cindy Williams, whatever. <laughs> okay. Who said what the fuck, Rogan? Yeah, it yeah. sounds like Rogan. Yeah, but Rogan was... That's how Rogan rolls. He fucking... He's a good actor. He'll, he'll yeah, say, oh my God, that's terrible, and then jump right in. Yeah, boring, and that was the sign what that, the that oh, he okay. usually gives. And, uh, More man, what's disrespect wrong? to well, him. We're having I, a good interview. I can, I, I, can, I can tell you, Anthony, that that's the last <laughs> time. <laughs> he doesn't even know you're not there. Uh, Anthony, <laughs> uh, he's calling you by my name, so I get anything no, I, you say now fucks me over. No, I think at that point he didn't want to acknowledge that I was breathing, and I think he was like, Saying that to Joe Rogan, thinking it was oh, you. thinking oh, yeah. okay. Oh. Disrespect to well, We're I, having I, a good interview. I can, I, I can, I can tell you, Anthony, that that's the last <laughs> time I'll ever be on your show. No, that was uh, that, yeah, Ben. I've, been, I've suffered your insults enough. That <laughs> I, I certainly wouldn't come back again. I'll be glad to talk to you about the Columbia uh, oh, documentary to to some that. other time that when he's not around. Can I talk to you, Ed? I'm okay. a big fan. I love you. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy has to read the. They're like an enabler, you fuck. <laughs> Can I talk to you? I'm a big you're fan. Like, you're like the fucking... Uh, Worm Norton. <laughs> you're like the kid in between, like, divorced parents. <laughs> Separated parents. <laughs> I really am a codependent. That was he's not around. Can I talk to you, Ed? I'm okay. a big fan. I love you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, how, be sure how, that he's not in. I, I don't. He does this all the time. I'm I hope he's happy you. to have you on the show. He is. A, he is. A, yeah, he's a destroyer. He's a destroyer. <laughs> a destroyer. <laughs> he's like Gordon Gecko. He builds yeah. nothing. Yeah. He liquidates. He's filthy. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's greasy. Yes, he is. I don't want to smell his shorts. He's a spend <laughs> <laughs> In quotes, I don't want to smell his shorts. Ed Asner. Bravo. The great the Ed, Ed, great Ed, Ed Asner. Asner. Thank you, sir. Very nice Thank to meet you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> You're a destroyer. <laughs> he called you a destroyer. <laughs> Wait till Anthony hears this on the replay. Oh, mm. that was phenomenal. Hey, Jimmy, get back here, man. I'm, I, I started sweating. <laughs> Ed, no, come on. Give me a handshake, please. <laughs> fuck you. Said, no, fuck you. Dude, Ed Asner just said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's phenomenal. He was not happy. Oh, that's good. Yeah, look, give me a handshake. Yeah, Fuck you. Fuck you. Ed Asner. The great Ed Asner. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, sorry, I missed that one. I'm sure I would have been in a corner in a fetal position. <laughs> like Jimmy probably was. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> like you were for Steve the Whistler? Oh, yeah. Let's do a little Steve the Whistler. I had to hide. What was Steve the Whistler? He uh, he whistles. He whistled. And it makes it sound... He, he does competitions all over the world, I guess. He put out an album of him whistling popular songs. Yeah. And it's horrible. He wanted to show off his talent, but the problem was he had a CD that he had to play, and then he whistled along to the CD. Yeah. You can't whistle a cappella. That's just silly. So we, uh, we fucked with the CD and made believe it wasn't working mm -hmm. over and over and over again. <laughs> Steve, this is, I swear to God. Oh, this is so bad. Now I remember I the can, song and everything. I can listen to Steve the Whistler audio uh, every day. Uh, every day. Just fucking horrendous. <laughs> he was off and running. Not knowing it was going to be a false start 20 times. Oh, God. I love, uh, uh whatever. Stupid I, I, tune that I he couldn't help whistled. myself, and I needed to whistle along with the great whistler, because he <laughs> he really takes this very seriously. This whistling thing <laughs> <It> does. <laughs> what happened? What happened? What happened to the CD? Put it in the oh, um, Steve. I'm sorry. You put it in the wrong one, dude. No, no. no. <laughs> Something happened to CD4. All right. Yeah, it's Steve the Whistler wasn't listening. working last time. I'm sorry. All right. Let's here we go again. Listening. Steve the Whistler. Well, 
Oh, what the hell is going on with the CD Dude, you player? Got it. That's the third time he's had a problem with that one. Clean it. This is the same one that I was skipping earlier when we were Put it in the other one. What's wrong with Steve the Wisp. <laughs> all right. We're all acting. No! <laughs> Why? I don't understand, Steve the Whistler. Our acting is the worst. <laughs> It, that's the third time he's had a problem with that one. Clean it. This is the same Clean one that we skipping earlier. When we were Put it in the other one. Steve the Whistler. I'll look. I'll look. This, I think. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Steve, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with this? Turn it off and turn it on. And can you turn it off from the back there? I'm doing it. I'm <laughs> holding. I'm holding the, the button? button down. I'm holding the button. Track four, right? Steve, track, I'm sorry. Track nine. <laughs> it's it'll it'll work now though, guaranteed because I saw the light on. When you were hiding behind the fucking crazy. machinery, <laughs> I had to run and hide behind the machinery uh, in well, the studio because I was so. I was laughing my ass off, and I couldn't look him in the face. This is a highlight, because this went on for 40 minutes or something. That's why, at this point, I couldn't take it anymore. Oh, no, was I was hiding. losing my mind. Track four, right? Steve, track, I'm sorry. Track nine. Track nine right? it's, it'll, it'll work now, though, guaranteed, because I saw the light on here, and I pressed the breaker. Yeah, nine. Nine. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> okay, let's try it again here. All right. One more time. That's not going. It's stuck. Oh, Jesus. Dude. Nice tone, right. though, right? Yeah, that was. I, I, I apologize. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. <laughs> you get it to stick like that. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, Steve the Whistler. I love Steve the Whistler. Remember his album cover? Oh, where he's like on the cover, <laughs> on the hood of the car. On the hood of a car with like. He was kind of sitting on it like he was trying to look cool. Oh, the, sexy. The license yeah. plate said whistle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, whistle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a douche. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be his big, his big uh, radio yeah. appearance, and yeah. he's going to whistle. And we showed him, right, guys? He certainly did. I'll say this, though. He could whistle a tune. Yeah, he sure can, Jimmy. <laughs> what a guy. When all is said and done, that fucker could whistle up a storm. Yeah. All right, we can play... Uh, that well, and 50 cents will get you a cup of coffee. Eh, get you on the subway. E, oh. e to the Rock found our uncomfortable interview with um, Linda Blair. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. From The Exorcist. Believe, um, Wasn't that here? No. Big Kev got us this interview. He went to the uh, that thing, that geek thing. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he he wound up getting Linda Blair for us on the phone. Yep, and um, we uh, we we were men of few words, mm -hmm. and she was not reacting. No. And right now on the phone, it's Linda Blair. Linda Blair. The power of Christ compels you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you! 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 We were really committed. Linda Blair, everyone. That's funny, Linda Blair, everyone. Yeah, there she is. Saying hello, hello, all right, I'm bored. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> oh, my ribs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm being reminded that Big Kev got her on the phone for us, and while he was had her on the phone for us, he was interviewing Adam West. Yeah. And because this whole thing went down, <laughs> he scored Big Kev. He got thrown out. Out of his big, uh, big, of... big convention. He loves going on those things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very hard to get thrown out of. But then we got Linda Blair back on the phone. We made of it all, we did. all we, good. Everything got better. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, Linda Blair calling back. <clears throat> The power of Christ compels you! 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 The can't get no more. Yeah. I don't know why she calls back. Uh that was a good moment. Cindy Williams, uh, Mr. DVD, I don't remember. I don't remember that one either. Let's try Mr. I forgot DVD. She call, I forgot she called back. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Mr. D, uh, Mr. DVD, we did the old silence game, too? I don't remember. Let's look. What did Mr. DVD do? Movie reviews? Yeah, he would review new DVDs that were coming uh, out. New DVDs week. and all that, sure, okay. Mr. DVD, any more yeah. DVDs coming out? What are the set? new ones coming, coming out? out this week or next there's week? There's a bunch. Or? There's a couple of uh, Anthony. He cannot hear us right now. Uh, yes, it's time to play the silent game. Okay. Um, the Pearl Harbor two disc set, the director's cut of Almost Famous, um, which is actually going to be pretty interesting because I'm more interested in seeing the director's cut of Almost Famous than I am in seeing the actual theatrical release. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Isn't that the most painful thing to have to sit through? Did he go like, fuck? Yeah, he was like, fuck, fuck. But he did call back. Oh, he's back. Hold on, Let's hold on. make like something's wrong with the phone. Mr. DVD? Yes. Hi, sorry. We uh, had a new phone system put in. It's still screwing up. It, it, I, we didn't hear the last part of that. Could I ask real quick, too, Pete. before you describe this? If, yeah. I, if you know, uh, Mr. HIV, I wanted to know. <laughs> no, it's Mr. DVD. <laughs> Colin, Jim that's Norton. so witty. That is what we calling for. It. <laughs> what a dick. Oh, Mr. DVD was not having it. No. <laughs> he told me. He sure did, Jimmy. And he was right. It was witty. <laughs> That's Norton. so witty. That, and he's blaming Colin for it. That was Jim Norton. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it's something Jim you would Norton, have expected out of Colin Jim Norton, you're indistinguishable from Colin, and that was so witty. All right, so uh, where were we? Pete Johnson's on the phone thing, though. Bunch so. of great stuff on right. December the 4th, including uh, the two-disc set of Pearl Harbor, which uh, you don't want to rush out and get because they're doing uh, a three-disc right, set. Let's in try May this again. This fool is going for it again. We're playing the silent game. He has no clue. That comes out on the fourth. We're doing also, this both Bill and Ted films come out on the fourth as well. Curse. All right, I heard that curse. time he okay. cursed. All right, all right. That time he cursed. All right, that time he He's sitting there with Vic. The phones, the phones have been dropping out. And then he hung up. You don't think we could get him a third time, do you? No, Mr. DVDs. Yeah. No, we've had... We, we. Are you on a better phone right now? I think it's us. Oh. I did hear something about uh, uh, Bill and Ted. Two Both movies Bill and really Ted films come out on the 4th, yes. Bill and, and Ted on the 4th. Anything uh, special with those DVDs? Not as far as I know, although I know that uh, the one Silent actor, game. Alex Winter, is probably eminently available to do a commentary. Uh, Alex Winter's career has not taken off as Keanu Reeves has. <laughs> All right, well. I can't take it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeremy. Is Steve around? Steve? 
Steve? Before we, if I have a question for, for our for Steve. <laughs> Steve. Is he working today? Yeah. Oh. Well, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to ask Steve? Why would he be listening to the show and come right in? Yes, I'm, I'm very busy. You actually have to tell him that we're talking about him. I'm tracking Gustav. <laughs> 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 There's a person in the water. Yes. People are, asking, people are asking about the beeps. I think that we that's the only version we got. Cause yeah, the, yeah. That's, old, that's old stuff. That's old, day we that's had to old put school. the beeps in so we could throw it back on the radio. Steve, uh, Jimmy's got something for you today. Can we get him back in on the phone? Yeah, can we get Mr. DVD back on the phone? What, what's he up to? Mm. For the Greg and Tony show. Yeah. Don't I tell him it's fly. us. He might remember. Why not? Greg and Tony. All right. Yeah, can we get him on today, maybe? Tell him we heard some stuff about him. We wanted to get his take on some DVDs and stuff. Yeah. See if we can get him on now. We can. I must get out of my way. Turn on the swing back to you. Wow, you grew back that facial hair quick, huh? Told you. Motherfucker. Told you. Wow, we. Yeah. This will mm. be, by midweek, this will be full gray yeah. goatee again. All right, let it go. He's got two <laughs> gray <laughs> hairs. <laughs> you are a lunatic. You have two gray hairs, maybe. What are you Three. talking about, gray hair? They're there. Grows fast. That cum fertilizer is amazing. It's like Jordy Farrell. <laughs> Jordy Farrell. Why is Jimmy imitating us, Steve Walk? <laughs> Walk like Steve again. I know it's radio, but it, Walk it, like it, Steve. It. It. Oh, God. Why are you doing <laughs> Come on. some other things you should worry about besides his gray hair. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh, snap. Um, Cindy Williams? Mm hmm. All right, we'll do Cindy Williams, too. There's a bunch of these, but we're going to try to move on a little bit. But uncomfortable uh, moment with Cindy Williams, who played, uh, what's her name on that show? Uh, uh, Shirley. On Laverne Shirley, Shirley Feeney. Yeah, well, Laverne was more the dykey one. Yes. And Shirley Feeney was the one who was kind of quiet and prissy. But it turned out that uh, the big ragu would come in, mm -hmm. and uh, she only liked, if you were unshowered, <laughs> to straddle her face... <laughs> And throat fucker. <laughs> Shirley Feeney loved being throat fucked by the big ragu after a bike ride. Because his asshole was notoriously knotted and hairy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. He would sing rags to riches and punch her in the face while she blew him. <laughs> <laughs> must, have been, must have been a lost episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember that yeah, one. Yeah, she'd go two knuckles deep in his fucking guinea keister. <laughs> <laughs> big ragu, yeah. the big uh, ragu. He uh, dump in her fucking mouth. Oh yeah, he would. He would actually hold her neck and and throat fuck her, and then come all over Laverne DeFazio's sweaters. He was actually asked to leave the house one time because he wiped his asshole with the L on her sweater in a fit of rage. And uh, one uh, very, uh, I don't know if it's a coincidence or something. He made an exact duplicate of the L in cum. As he just spewed <laughs> <laughs> And then they went to the pizza place and he took a shit in Mr. DeFazio's pizza dough. They had to close the restaurant down because of health code violations. <laughs> the health inspectors found feces in his pizza dough. Because of the big ragu. Yeah. The big hairy shit. Well, the big ragu took a fucking a, a hangover shit. <laughs> a watery hangover shit in Mr. DeFazio's pizza dough. <laughs> Uh, shit. That's how it went down, huh? Yeah, it wasn't even yeah. a solid one that Mr. <laughs> Mr. D could go in there and ladle out. Yeah. It was a fucking liquidy one that got baked in a five or six pies. <laughs> People were getting sick. Somebody finally recognized corn and peanuts. No, like, wait a minute. <laughs> and some big ragu ass hair. <laughs> there was some curly ass hair <laughs> with a fucking W. The Wrangler thing came off his jeans as he was shitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could shit that bad that you lose the logo off your jeans, Jimmy. Well, yeah. Well, you know what it was too. Yeah. They they also found yeah. in the in the outside of the dough, they found two heel prints, like he had squatted and shit, but two his, two his heels went in the corner of the dough, <laughs> and somebody went, "Say, there's heel prints in my pizza." And they knew it was the big rag in his shoes. Be. Yeah, he's always huffing and dancing. So yeah, they they knew because he had those big uh, those fucking lips, oh. those heels. <laughs> Well, yeah. now at least we know what happened. That's right. And remember Shirley, that episode where she had to go 
because uh, she had uh, who they work for shots. Remember, she was doing that party trick and she got a shots bottle and a punch, <laughs> and then Fonzie kicked her and broke it. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing the put the beer bottle in the cunt trick, and, and then fucking Fonzie was practicing his taekwondo and he kicked her right, kicked her right up in her, her fucking bunt and broke the bottle in her snatch. That was an ugly one. <laughs> Cheryl, Cheryl, I'm, I'm, she said, I'm, I'm bleeding from the baby maker. How do you not remember that? <laughs> How do you not remember that? From broken, <laughs> uh, broken shots, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when yeah, Fonzie I remember that kicked. Like, hey. Fonzie kicked. Yeah. yeah, it was right after the hey. shark jumping episode. I'm gonna kick in the cunt, <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Hey, um, Stephen S. from Bayshore. Now, maybe we could set this up for after the break. Where has Stalker Patty disappeared to? The day of the PNC show, I learned she has no refrigerator in her shitbox of an apartment. She has to shop every day for her little, pointless, life-sustaining meals. Ooh, is that what she does? Well, let's get Patty on the phone and see if that's uh, what that's about. Yeah, well, I don't eat that much, and I can't refrigerate anything because I don't have a refrigerator. Yeah, we haven't had her on since she stopped the show with that uh, hypnotizing oh my segment God. we did with her. You know, she, right. she called me three times last week. I didn't pick up any time, but she called and left messages each time to ask me if there was going to be a show on Friday. <laughs> It's thickened the biggest show, dude. And she left me. I hope. I think I might even still have it. I hope she you just, said yes. She just went on. I didn't. Oh, I didn't call. Yeah, that was. She been went good. on and on about because you know usually on Fridays I come down to the show, so it was just like it went on and yeah, on for like a minute long. No message. Do you still have it? I think I do. Yeah, oh, let me go it. look. I might. I might still no it. shutting her up. Well, after that wonderful setup from Jimmy, uh, reminding us of some of the great uh, Laverne and Shirley episodes. Here's Cindy Williams. So, uh, what have you been up to, Cindy? Nothing, as you know. Be otherwise, why would I be in Has Been Corner? Oh, wow. Why did we jump right to this yeah. part? Yeah. Iraq, explain yourself. Because. Come in here so we can make fun of you. <laughs> Come on in here, buddy. <laughs> Good. Hello, Iraq. How are you? Hey, didn't Good. you used to be in that exercise commercial, Body by Cake? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, first fat joke out of the way. <laughs> um, no, you, you started the bit by introducing Has Been Corner, and she accused you of stealing it from Andy Kaufman. You said yes. Which I was, because the, the beauty of Has Been Corner with Cindy Williams, I'm a huge Andy Kaufman fan. She was on Has Been Corner when, when, um, when uh, the great uh, Mr. Kaufman did it. Well, that first. And now you fast forward, and that that time is a bitch. Now she's a has been, but at the time she was laughing her ass off as Andy Kaufman was making someone right. very uncomfortable as he was doing it. That yeah. first part was um, was just a little banter back and forth, but this is where it really started to uh, get start. depressing for her. Yeah. Okay. It got a little too real for her. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what have you been up to, this, Cindy? Nothing, as you know. Be otherwise, why would I be in Has Been Corner? Well, you were on uh, Laverne and Shirley, obviously. The beloved Shirley Feeney. Beloved. On Laverne and Shirley. Beloved. And then after that, there was... um. <laughs> what was that? Oh, after that. shit. <laughs> wow, that oh, is, I forgot about that. That's brilliant from Anthony. Deafening man. deafening silence. And then there was... <laughs> oh. That time you, yeah. Listen to this, man. This I forgot about this. Shirley, Feeney, on Laverne and Shirley, and then after that, there was um. <laughs> what was that? After that, there was two kids. Oh, the two kids got in the way. Yeah. That's gonna be your excuse. Well, I do you resent them? <laughs> do you? Res <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That's going to be your excuse? Wow, this is just vicious. Uh, we were really mean back then. I love it. God, I love it. After that. There were two kids. Oh, the two kids got in the way? Yeah. That's going to be your excuse? Well, uh, Do you resent them? That. Do you resent totally. them for that? Totally. Because you were... Totally, you're... but not as much as I'm resenting you two right now. No. What? This is all fun, right? So, uh, Cindy, seriously, what have you been uh, doing in the last uh, 20 Nothing. years? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> um, okay. So, like I said, Laverne and Shirley, then... Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, was she mad? Oh. <laughs> Laverne and Shirley meant nothing. You know how huge, you. you know how huge that Laverne and Shirley show was back in the day. Yeah, and she was in American Graffiti well, before that, right? Well, it was same, a big drop off. Show. After she the, was in a movie called A Conversation too with Gene Hackman, directed by uh, Coppola, I believe. Mm. Little picture with Gene Hackman, directed really? by Coppola, and Robert Duvall. I believe she killed Robert Duvall in it, or had him killed. Oh, oh, really? Hold on. Yeah. A little movie, little movie you know, 1974. <laughs> I'm guessing. Let's say hi to Dano in Kentucky. Dano. Good morning, bubble boy. Good morning, Dan. How's Jack Lord? <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Jimmy. Thank you. Hey, I got a question. Um, is a bunt and a gunt the same thing as a fupa? Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. okay. They're all that mushy fat area above the clit yeah. and below the chin. Fupa. <laughs> you, you boys know what that stands for, right? What? <laughs> Poopa, it's you know it's all the flesh right? around a vagina. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, Punch it out, boys. Have a good morning. All right. By the way, did, um, just real quick, did anybody hear fucking that douchebag Oberman? What a fucking what did he say that douchebag this guy. Just uh, morning, Joe. Who is a blockheaded idiot? Is <laughs> Joe Scarborough? He's, He's a blockheaded, blockheaded idiot. I, I spent the, his fucking rock'em sock'em robot head. <laughs> I spent the day with him, man. He's pretty cool. He's a good guy. Well, they, I was doing a piece that never really aired. It, mm -hmm. it was a waste because all the edgy stuff. There's no way they were oh. gonna air. Yeah. And I sat in Imus's chair back in the day, and I farted and oh. took his mic and just did all this dumb stuff, and they barely showed anything. But he's a very cool guy. I'm sure he is. Men with square heads are normally very easy to get. <laughs> hey, fucking... What, was Keith on his show or something? SpongeBob fucking morning guy. He, uh... Thank you. He, uh... No, he was calling in or something, and Oberman's like, uh, should you pick up the shovel? Because he was, like, not bad-mouthing McCain. Nobody who works with Oberman, like, what a fucking scumbag mm -hmm. that guy is. Yeah, I'm not a big he, fan of the Oberman. He's uh, the biggest douche your co-workers fucking scumbag. <laughs> He's, uh... God almighty, is he aggravating. And it's not because of his political views, either. I'm kind of torn. Mm. I'm kind of torn, because uh, he, he goes after O'Reilly really, really well. Exactly. But then he has his own douchiness. And then he fucking sucks Jesse Jackson's dick. No, I know. Dick. Then he has his own douchiness. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Because O'Reilly's an easy target in the sense that... He's an easy target. Yeah, go on. He's got a big <laughs> cock and a loaf of sponge. <laughs> but no one's ever going to fault you for going after O'Reilly. It's easy. Mm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> More Cindy Williams. So you don't want to promote that you're going to be at uh, the Meadowlands Convention Center for Super the Super Mega Show? No, but thank you very much for that. I'll be there at the Has Been um, uh, table. Oh. Signing Has Been autograph. Why, Liz Lindsay Wagner's going to be there as well? Yes. You might want to call her. <laughs> you got her number? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. All right. hmm. Hey, I like milk and Pepsi. That wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> what is that about? That's what Laverne used to always drink on the show. Oh, I'm just pounded. I didn't realize I was really this you the good. head scumbag on this one. Yeah, you took the lead. Hope he on has this some one. real douche lines too. But no, fuck, you, am I being an asshole? No, you took the lead on this. Who would know that that was a Laverne thing? <laughs> that wasn't me. It was oh. common knowledge, to be honest, because she was drinking milk that. and Pepsi. I don't remember. What happened was, <laughs> oh, I don't remember. That. She would get acid reflux. <laughs> yeah. Because she was such a cum drinker. <laughs> Cum would give her acid reflux because she would drink it out of a fucking glass. Because Carmine was fucking Shirley, so some of his black friends would come over and jerk off into a cup for Laverne, and she would drink it. The stupid face. <laughs> some bukkake. And they, keep, and they had to keep it safe for network TV, so they just called it Milk and Pepsi. Right? No, no, Milk and Pepsi is what she used to take the reflux because she would have cum burp. <laughs> cum bubble burps. Burp. Burp. <laughs> so Milk and Pepsi would kill that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right. Hey, I like milk and Pepsi. That wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> milk and Pepsi. <laughs> Member Laverne and Shirley. I thought that was um, Shirley, but Laverne used to drink milk and Pepsi. Oh, 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 oh. All the time. All right. Wow, I don't, <laughs> I feel kind of uncomfortable right now. I'm overheating. Boo Boo Kitty was you, right? That's right. Say Boo Boo Kitty. See, I, I'm a big fan of Laverne and Shirley. All the That's time. great. So our uh, we encourage all our listeners to go to uh, the Meadowlands Convention Center for Super Mega Show Friday, Saturday, go. and Sunday, right? Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Cindy. Okay. Thanks, fellas. Bye. 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 All right. There she goes. 
Holy oh, Williams. Oh my God. No, I. You know that. Opie, don't look so proud of yourself. <laughs> you got it. Like your voice is very different. Yeah. A lot of people talk about how my voice is different. Is I have more of a rasp to it back then. Yeah. I've uh, refined it a little more now. Yeah. Because you don't smoke anymore. That's right. Uh, yes, Jimmy, did you... Uh... What was Boo Boo Kitty? That was her little, uh, like, um, <laughs> doll that she had that uh, oh my God, would that's... make her feel better. He doesn't want an answer. No, I actually, of course he doesn't. I actually want did. An answer to Boo Boo no, Kitty. No, no, either that or he doesn't want an answer. <laughs> so he can tell us a little tidbit we might not know about the program. Well, now you remember Boo Boo Kitty, right, Jimmy? I vaguely remember, <laughs> but what happened was we all knew the big ragu was known for his girth. Yeah. And he would, he would notoriously fuck her hard. And when he would tear the lining of her vagina, and they would say, "Why aren't you coming into work today?" She would point at her pussy and go, "Boo boo kitty." Oh, oh okay. <laughs> As opposed to people listening to this who heard that long joke are going, "Boo boo Jimmy." Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I like boo boo kitty Jimmy. I'm a fan of the. Boo -boo That's what kitty. happened when once. Oh, I know what it was. Yeah. After after the big ragu wrecked a bunch of Mr. DeFazio's pizzas by hangover shitting. <laughs> right, him, I remember that. He now. picked him up. And he fucking, he threw one at the Big Ragu, but Big Ragu moved, and it hot landed right on Shirley Feeney's pussy. And then she had scalded boo-boo kitty. And she had to go to the emergency room. Hot shit pizza. Hot shit pizza all, all over her vagina. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People think I'm making that up. But no, true. no, I, I remember all these episodes. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh. Wow. Yeah, all right, Kristen Bell. Sure, we can do that from Heroes. She's in Heroes, right, Kristen Bell? Uh, or was? I don't watch that. Still show. is okay, and she also was in Forgetting Sarah Marshall, mm -hmm. a movie mm -hmm. I saw and liked. And we had a we had a wonderful interview with uh, Kristen Bell, who's been on our show, sitting right in that seat a couple times. Eh? Yes, this is how it went down when she was uh, promoting Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Uh, we got to interrupt this uh, news story. We got a, a a big star on the on the on the phone. Kristen Bell, the uh, the star of Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Kristen. Yes. Congratulations on the new movie. Are you excited? I'm so excited. Awesome. All right. <laughs> oh. 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 So. Uh, oh. So oh, let's... Roland is in <laughs> cardiac arrest. <laughs> See, we still do it. It's a lot of people. <laughs> that was recently. <laughs> oh, see, we still do it. Just not as often, because we got to get some of these guys actually on the show. That Jerry Springer funny. calling in today, matter of fact. Is he? Yes. About what? Uh, America's Got Talent. Um, what, what is he plugging now? F and hooked on that dumb show. What's he doing on? Is he on it? Yeah, what does he do? He's the, uh... But besides have no examples of his show. He's like the Ryan... Nothing? Ooh. Wait, what? Being a show Maybe is Maybe I wasn't listening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me repeat that. I was saying that this show's not particularly good. So on America's Got Talent, there were no examples of his show. <laughs> Gotcha. See, the people out there are really interested. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, E Rock, why not. Uh, Stop eating? One man Star Wars guy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we were talking to E Rock. It's coming in volume two. <laughs> what? Oh, volume two? Oh. Yeah. When's volume two going to be here? You'll have it for tomorrow. All right, volume two. Tomorrow's volume out. two. Why, why not man... volume one? He, he, he makes volume two, so it's like, okay, I didn't do this. Yeah. So there's a volume two. Exactly. And people are asking for the Bernie Getz, too. That was fucking oh, yeah. scary, man. Yeah. Fucking scary. How come volume I... one is so lacking? Boy, the volumes coming up must be really good, huh? Yeah, they gotta be the best. Sure. Sure. Uh, that's why when you get, like, the second greatest hit CD from your favorite band, eh. They put all the good ones in the first one. They sure did, Anthony. Why they would you? sure why did. Why would you not? Is uh, Richard Jenny worth playing? It's all right, it's the prison interview style. So. Oh, the prison interview? You want to do this or you want to just uh, leave it here? Richard Jenny? Uh, oh, no. Dead guy. Dead guy creeps you out? Yeah. yeah. Who's this? <laughs> this is Richard Jenny. Who's this? Richard Jenny. Hey, uh, yeah. Richard, it's Opie and Anthony. How are you? Opie and Anthony, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good? I'm just peachy, thanks. Uh, when are you coming in? 
I was thinking about coming in uh, today. Today? Yeah. At what time? Probably about uh, 4.40. <laughs> 4.40? It's what, 4.22? Yeah, I'm, I'm really close by. Where are you? I'm actually staying in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> You're outside the studio? Yeah, I've been, I've been staying in the lobby. I didn't want to miss you guys. <laughs> hmm. And you want to come in and do the show? Yeah. If it's okay, if you're not too busy talking about Ron Jeremy's uh, I could maybe stop in. Well, Ron's coming in, too. You get along with him? Yeah, you said yesterday, right? Yes, I've met him before. You want to do a prison visit? Do I want to do a what? A prison visit. No, why would I want to do a prison visit? Well, that's where you, you're on the phone like you are now, and then you step up to the glass on the door uh, to the studio. Right. And uh, you talk that way. No, I'm not doing that. Come up to the glass. <laughs> It'll be fun. It's like Oz. You ever watch why Oz? Can't I, why can't I just come in? I can't just come in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you worried about germs or something? <laughs> well, it's up to you. I'm just hoping you put me on. Are, are you going to be funny, Richard? Yeah, I'll be funny. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I'm sold. I'm sold. <laughs> not to put the pressure on you or anything. Do you got any knock-knock jokes? <laughs> He's laughing at the juvenile stuff again. <laughs> you knock, knock. <laughs> knock, knock. Uh, who's who's there? there? Richard Jenny. Richard Jenny who? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Jenny, you're here in knock, knock because I'm pistol whipping Opie and Anthony. <laughs> uh, get it, Richard Jenny who? Oh, sorry. All right, Richard. Can you give us a few minutes to think about it? <laughs> yeah, think it over. <laughs> Jimmy, mm, just yeah. Give it a, yeah, that's uh Well, you know, we didn't know mm, he was going to kill himself, Jimmy. No, no we How didn't. How are we supposed to know? That we didn't. We used to love the prison uh, visits. Yeah, people would come up to the window and talk. They were wonderful. Right. Hey, uh, you were talking about the Linda Blair. We got that going into break. Ooh. So Linda Blair uh, calls our show. She's, of course, uh, the actress from The Exorcist. Yes. And we were uh, going to talk to Linda Blair. This is how it went down. This was NEW, too, by yeah, the way. Yeah, back in the day. Not not too long ago. Probably eight years ago. Yeah. S seven years ago, maybe. Here's how it went down. And right now on the phone, it's Linda Blair. Linda Blair. The power of Christ compels you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you! 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 Hello? The power of Christ compels you! Hello? The power of Christ compels you! Hello? The power of Christ compels you. Hello? The power of Christ compels you. Hello? The power of Christ compels you. 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 The power of Christ compels you! 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 Linda Blair, everyone! <laughs> there she is. It was so... Linda Blair! <laughs> <laughs> oh my ribs! <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a hint of stopping. That. No, no. It was just it was. This was going to continue until it it ended. Oh yeah. What are you going to ask Linda Blair? Come on, let's be honest with each other. Yeah. The hell. Oh. Oh was that pea soup? Who cares? It was Rick James. <laughs> right. Did he burn you with his crack pipe? Right. <laughs> I think he was really packing, though, Rick James. Yeah, yeah. that's what I hear. Yeah. She, uh, boy, she loved that, huh? Yeah, that kind of makes me like her more. Mm -hmm. sure. So that made you laugh yesterday, Jimmy? Yeah, just right. I just, it was just so obnoxious so... and stupid. It yeah. really made me laugh. It goes from kind of funny to 
annoying to really funny. Yeah. To, to watch her lose it, like, at first she's trying to be good-natured, right. and then she's like, is this a recording? And then she gets, she goes, ah! Ah, she gets all mad. She's so mad. Good. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> I'm picturing big stupid Kev just stand there, not knowing what's going on the other end of yeah, the phone. Yeah, cool. is this, is this going well? <laughs> She's horrified. He probably hears like he sees her probably listening, thinking, "Ah, oh, they're probably having some laughs." Yeah, having some laughs. The old version of me, I would have had twenty exorcist questions ready to roll. Oh yeah, ready to roll. The nice old <laughs> smiling, all smiling, happy, happy, <laughs> happy to be there. Just waiting for my TV gig to come in. <laughs> Let's hear it for Linda Blair. Hey, that was hey. great, wasn't it, guys? Hey, Linda, thanks for joining us today. Wasn't that great, guys? Remember, Linda Blair was flown in on Midway Air. <laughs> Midway Air has a first class that's <laughs> inexpensive. <laughs> hey, man, <sighs> that niceness act got me nowhere. Screw being nice. Nice stinks. <laughs> nice stinks. Why didn't my dad teach me that lesson when I was growing up? Nice stinks. Nice stinks. <laughs> it got me nowhere except working yeah. every Christmas Eve and every Christmas Day and every Thanksgiving, every New Year's Eve, every weekend for years, year after year after year. Yeah. And there I am, just being nice and happy to be there. Oh, I understand. Okay, Yeah, boss. okay. All right, whatever you say. Climb okay, the, climb the okay. ladder and wait there. All right, I'll, I'll climb that ladder and make a fool of myself. Okay, okay. You know, look, it was the journey that brought you here. Mm-hmm. The culmination of a career. A lifetime ago. Uh, you know, that's your responsible... Uh, that, that, that stuff is responsible for... Putting you on the road that brought you here. Don't beat me up too bad because I found uh, I found every episode of Real Rock TV last night as well, my friend. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! And those are going to start showing up uh, as early as next week. Those are a little um wacky. Wacky is right. Wow.